Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Tone Talk with Dave and Mark. It's a Monday night, um, episode 34, and uh, we've got a special guest tonight, John Thompson of Bad Cat Two Bamps. And John, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you for having me on. Nice to be yeah. here. Oh, no problem. Thanks no for problem. Uh, thanks for joining us. Awesome. And Dave, what's going on with you? I'm in the process of moving my shop around, so it's kind of chaos here. <laughs> oh, really? You going somewhere, or are you just no, no? We're 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 relocating where the actual shop part is to a different spot in the building, and uh, and that's a little bit of chaotic right now. So I bet, but uh, it'll be fine when it's done. Are you going to be changing location? No, 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 no. Well, just in the I mean, in like the same, you, in the you're same. like you're. But for you, like where yeah, you work for the yeah, show, where I, where I work and where the sh where we do the show, yeah, I'm changing location. Oh. Where where is your shop, Dave? Where, what, what city? In North you Hollywood, across from yeah. uh, Mates Rehearsals on Cleon Street. Oh God, yeah, I, that would be a more appropriate location for an ant builder than Santa Ana, California. <laughs> yeah. We once had a big ant come through here years ago. I can't recall who it was, but <laughs> <laughs> so um. How far away, because I'm not familiar with the uh, the area, how far away are you guys from each other? Probably, what, an hour? Hour and probably, a half? Yeah, probably an well, hour. Well, wait a minute. California, what, what time of day and what day are you talking about? Five o'clock on a Friday, we're six hours <laughs> apart. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it, it can range. Yeah, how far it can range anywhere from, uh, you know, like three hours to 20 minutes. <laughs> no, right. no, probably yeah. 40 minutes probably, but, um, yeah. But so, yeah, in, so, in miles, it's just... It's not that much. No, no, not really. <laughs> Thirty-five or forty miles, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Which that's any cool. in any sane place that would take thirty minutes to drive. Right, right. But uh, but here, nobody has stick shift. No stick shifts in California. It's too painful on the freeway. Oh my god! Can't even think about that. Mm -mm. It must be just so Prius, I, I, Prius heaven there. So I, I played, uh, I finally played one of your amps, Dave. Oh, did you? Yeah, a friend of mine brought a Dirty Shirley by. I freaking loved it. Ah, it was cool. great. Yeah, I yeah. never, I never, never, I've seen your amps on a lot of stages and I've heard them a lot, you know, from people playing them in the halls and, you know, different clubs and things, but I've never actually played one myself. I it was great. Yeah, the I Dirty Shirley it. is sort of that classic, you know, classic rock sort of fat JTM sort of sound. The sound I grew up with. Yeah, yeah, the sound, yeah. The sound on the Foreigner records and Aerosmith yeah. records and all that kind exactly. of stuff. Exactly. Great for that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Joe Perry mm -hmm. actually has one of those. Does he? Yeah, he used it on one tour, actually, one full tour. And then I haven't seen it since. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So what's he using I mean, now? Marshall again? Various Marshalls and various amps. It always changes every tour with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a time that... Um, that Joe Bonamassa was was asking us about using a, a Wildcat. This is maybe five five years ago or so. And my partners at the time, I, I, I bought them out since, but they were very, uh, well, who's this Joe? Who? What? Oh, who is this guy? You are not going to sell him an app cheap, you know? Forget him. <laughs> and then I, and then I thought, you know, I thought the problem with Joe is I would spend more time explaining why he's not using it anymore than you know talking about him using it because he'd have it for a week and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, on some, you know, and it'd be you know fourteen other things on the stage. Yeah, he had one. He had one of mine too. <clears throat> which, uh, I think his tech has now. <laughs> how many? How many people write you letters and say, um, you know, you should give me an app because I've got a web blog and I've got you know this many followers. And oh my god! <laughs> how many? How many today? How many did you get today? Yeah, you know the funny thing is, yeah, that that's, that's what I get all the time. Is it's. Uh, yeah, how many today exactly? Did I have one today? Maybe I had one today. It might have um, been me. You know, you know what I do then? <laughs> what I what I do is I, I then forward it to my uh, my partner. Mm -hmm. I go, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Call him up. You want to handle artist relations? Well, here's an artist relations thing. Yeah. Re relate. Yeah, I, I I get a lot of that and I just um my, you know Mike Francisini, right? Yeah. Yeah, Mike always used to say to me, uh, he goes, Jimi Hendrix paid for his amps. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, it. exactly. I, my my line is Jerry Cantrell paid for his amps. There you go. <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, how I generally start that conversation is, well, um, you need to send me all your information, and um, just to let you know uh, how we work it is that there is an artist cost on the amps, mm -hmm. and um, if I deem your stuff is you know qualifies, then you'll worthy. be able to buy it at basically dealer cost. Right, right. They're not getting anything for free. No, 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 no never. No, yeah. no. And they always, they always try though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They try. Yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> even, I don't even give them pedals generally. <laughs> oh, aren't you coming out with a, a wah pedal or something? I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. just, uh, we were at the LA Amp Show, and a lot of people mm -hmm. tried that. Yeah, it sounds really good. Really vocal sounding. Wow. Well, that video looked sounding great too. Yeah, it, it, it launches in a few days. It's on the October fifth. It's the uh, Hi. the the in store launch date, and uh, you'll also see like five videos launch all, all at once too. Wow! From five we, of your we favorite built the, YouTubers. Uh, we built the um, the inductor in the old boudoir. Oh, did uh, you? Back yeah, back my old partners and I, we built, we used this little plumbing cap and we seated this, I thought it was like a 600 Henry, I forget what it was, it was a, yeah, they five, wanted us five or 600 Henry probably, yeah. Something like that, yeah. So we had to wind all these coils up and we would like, you know, sort them, you know, by high to low and then have, they would only fall within a certain parameter that they could use. And yeah. Use yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah I, I, I remember I, those, I remember those canned little inductors, absolutely. I, I got those at Home Depot. I went down the to Home Depot and I bought, yeah, the plumbing, there were little plumbing caps. Oh, okay. Copper, copper plumbing caps and bought them at Home Depot. And we stuffed the core in there and potted them and, and uh, you know, that's what they wanted. So we, we built what they wanted. I don't even know who owns them anymore. Does Buddha even, is still, are they, PV? Yeah, are they around anymore? PV still owns them. Do they? PV owns Buddha? Yeah. yeah PV bought Buddha, Buddha out quite a while ago. Wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And then they were making some amps for a while. Uh, the same, I mean, same, same way, same everything. But uh, so they're still hand wired. Uh, well, no, it hadn't been hand wired for a while. Even when Buddha had it, the last revision of the amp was a PC board. Mm -hmm. So, nope. Interesting. So I did all those the SuperDrive series amps for them. Oh really? Front end, yeah. The front end of those amps were my design. The the rear end was their power section that they had. So what what percentage of your amps are are, are hand wired and which ones are, are PCB? What what do you have? We only have two amps that are PCB, mm -hmm. but when I when we say hand wired, it's um, it's technically a, a a board that is uh, part PCB. It's like a PCB turret board, so to speak. Okay. Uh, so there's a few traces for high voltage and a few traces for some relays and stuff, but most of it is wires soldering to parts that are soldered onto it like a turret board. Okay. Um, so it just makes it easier for things like DC heaters and and uh, uh, relays and different things like that to to uh, to do. So I call it a hybrid design. Right. So and ninety percent of the amp is is a hand wired amp. Yeah, we, we've got wires going, you know, to all the tube sockets, all the pots, all the, you know. Yeah, we we've got a, a line of PCB amps now. We have got the Legacy series, which is the old hand wires, you know, the traditional Bad Cat stuff, and then we have the new Player series stuff, which is all on a PCB. Yeah, we just yeah, use yeah. the same transformers, and I, I, to be honest with you, I can't. I mean, they sound the same, really. There's very little difference if you do it right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, we have two lower cost amps that are PC board, and there's nothing. It, they stack up with the bigger mm -hmm. amps, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah there's I a got, few. There's a few differences about them. Uh, there's some parts we use in the bigger amps we don't use in the 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 other amps, but um, no, they stack up. They sound great. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Mark before you came on, and um, I said to him, I I said I I think I might have sold four four twelve cabinets in the last three or four years. And I said, Dave sells a lot of 412 cabinets. I, I can't give them away. Yeah, Nobody we, wants we, we sell a lot. 
I, mean, I, I don't know what those numbers are. I'd have to look at my my report, but um, yeah, we do we do pretty well with them. Is it pretty steady, Dave, or has it been decreasing? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, reasonably steady. We sell a lot of two twelves too, though. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, which is also cool cab. So I think ninety percent of what I do is one twelve. Maybe ninety five percent of what I do. You know, yeah. Occasionally, a renegade will ask for a two twelve, and we'll make it for him. But that's about it. People yeah. people get pissed that I have a, a forty watt app. They think my forty watts. Oh, holy crap! I don't need forty watts. Give me different different clientele. 15. You know. Yeah, it's a different it's a completely style of music, different, different clientele. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I know. Go ahead. But uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead John. I was trying to figure out where, where is Dave right now. What what is that? Where are you at? You got oh, it's my, it's, my, it's, it's my it's my shop, but I just have the lights dimmed and it's it's kind of a mess right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like I said, we're we're in the midst of literally like organizing and moving to the other part of the building, so it's like uh, so you know the, the junk is just left over. It <laughs> then we'll throw that away. A while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just I just recently moved all of my manufacturing in house because at some point about two years ago I had this crazy fantasy that I was going to be able to outsource everything, right? You know the, the the chassis, the cabinets, and have production and testing and repair, and I was going to operate from a little office off my bedroom, you know. But then after a while, I sort of realized that that the problem was first off. The people that I was working with to have them build my product moved like a glacier. It just took them forever to get back to me on issues. And and I finally just said, nobody cares about your product as much as you do. So if it's not being built right in front of you, you know, while you're watching it, you know, it's not going to come out the way you want it to. Right. right. So now I'm stuck here hoping uh, that I was going to be spending a lot more time golfing than I really am now. <laughs> And and, that, and that's where the line comes in. When did you realize you made a mistake in the oh. career cho in the career choice? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it 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 was a mistake. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I blew it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went I went to law school. I didn't I didn't want to do this. I was you know, and ended up in the amp business because I have the same disease you have. You just there's something about this that that's so fun and so interesting and. You know, you can't escape it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you probably like. If, I, if I don't somebody, know what I would do now. Now it's too late. You know, I'm deep. <laughs> I'm well, I mean, like, but I mean, I, I think, I think honestly, you know, if somebody came to you and said, "Oh, Dave, here's two hundred million dollars," you would still do what you're doing right now because you like it. Yeah, because I can't actually sit still. I can't. I can't stay. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time having the the one day off a week. <laughs> Yeah, that I have. I'm like they, sitting there at home, going, "Yeah, I, I wish I had to go to the shop and mess around with some stuff." <laughs> yeah, my wife and kid are looking at me like, "No." <laughs> How old is your kid? Uh, he's seven. I have some older daughters too that are yeah, twenty six and twenty three and twenty two. So, wow, okay, or twenty four. Sorry, twenty six, twenty four, twenty two. Mine is um, 16 and 12, two girls. Oh. Nice. Yeah. So, my, yeah, I got three that are kind of hatched, so to speak. And then, uh, and then, and then the little son, little terror. <laughs> yeah. Who's still at home? Any, yeah, any of them been home a long time. <laughs> yes, exactly. At least another yeah. 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Any of them play guitar? He dabbles a little bit in. He's not quite ready yet. He's he's uh, he's he, he he likes to strum on it a little bit, but I, I strategically left them all over the house trying to get them interested. You know, like set them in their bedroom and like right. in the hallway and nothing. Yeah, Didn't I care. tried. Yeah, I tried with my son. He's thirteen. Um, yeah. Last year, I think, or a year, two years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, he showed a little a little interest. I taught him like an E minor chord. And uh, took a picture of it, and then the next day he came to me and told me, he, "Yeah, it was over." 
I'm good. Yeah, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> I'm not into it. I, I really don't like it, Dad. I'm like, all right. I'm like, if you change your mind, I mean, then I, you know, I leave the guitars all, all over, but I'm lefty too. So, and he was righty. So it didn't really help. But, but, um, what, what I unfortunately found out, uh, at the last, uh, summer NAM, my son came to it. And unfortunately, I figured out that he likes drums. Oh, no. Uh, no. I, no, that's what I said. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I've, raised, I've raised him wrong. He literally sat down with uh, every time chance he got at, at a drum set. Oh. And he was just intrigued by drums. And I'm like going, oh, no. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Get him How about an electronic piece. set with headphones? There you go. Electronic set with headphones is good. <laughs> I, have a, I have a sign in my lobby that says drummers must be accompanied by an adult <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you, like next to it it says and not the bass player right right <laughs> That's funny. of course John uh, you do know Mark's first instrument is drums so now, it is. is it? Yes. oh no <laughs> well yeah. you'd, you'd have yeah. to bring somebody if you came here you'd have to bring somebody with you okay <laughs> <laughs> well, if I graduated the guitar, does that do I qualify at that no. point? No. no. Okay. <laughs> once you once you play drums, you're a drummer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I start. I started out banging things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll leave that one alone. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yes. Exactly. Well, you know, why don't we uh, make a segue there, John, if you don't mind? Would you? Sure. Could you tell us like how um how you got involved with Bad Cat Amps and if you can. Give us some history of that. And, yeah, you know. that that is a really crazy uh, story. Um, what I found is most of the people who are at the inception of Bad Cat um, are not talking. You know, there is a lot of uh, there was litigation. There was a lot of you know, if you could ask the, the four or five people that were there, and they all tell a completely different story. But basically, what I've been able to piece together through reading the boxes of letters from the lawsuits and things that I found in moving the business was that, was that, that Mark Sampson and Rick Parada were at matchless. Rick became disenchanted. He took off, left matchless. Um, and there was a fellow by the name of James Heydrich that, um, was building guitar amps in his garage and tinkering around. And he had heard about matchless going under and had gone to approach, uh, Rick Parada and ask him if he was interested in selling the brand. Well, Rick didn't have the brand anymore and he talked to him and, and somehow he ended up working with James and giving James all of the schematics and the, the build sheets and the, uh, you know, the places to buy the parts. And, and, uh, so he went off and he started this little company called bad cat and Rick was helping him out with designs. And then Mark had approached Rick uh, about wanting to sell a, a piece of gear or something like that. And um, Rick had sent him to go see James. James recognized Mark coming into Bad Cat as being something of a marketing opportunity. And uh, they started working together and that had just completely fallen apart after about four years. And uh, yeah, you know, the, it, this is probably not the place to, to talk in too much detail about it, but there was, there were some issues there with James. I mean, you've, you you know James, Dave, right? You've met him a few times. I, 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 I think I have. I'm not totally sure. I know Mark. Yeah. But he, he was kind of an interesting guy, you know, kind of. Um, and, you know, you, you know, you don't want to, because he passed away this last year. No. Okay. And so he's, he's not around to defend himself. But, you know, I got a lot of calls, you know, about him. And, and I had said that, um you know, I said, well, how I feel about James is I feel so bad that he wasted so much of his life being so envious and so, so hateful. You know, he was very, he was a very interesting, jealous kind of guy. And he, he sort of wanted to be, you know, sort of a, uh, you know, Howard Dumble kind of character, you know, and he really, that's not who he was. Right. You know, he was just, and so, um, Anyway, all that aside, so he, so Mark left, and Tracy Sands came in to work with him, and they they were tinkering with designs, and they were in some trouble around, I guess around 2010 or so. And I had taken a trip to a Nam show, and I was wandering around the building for four days, on purpose, and um, I ended up falling in love with the Bad Cat Cub, and so. Um, 
some while after the show, I started calling around to some dealers and they were telling me, oh, you know, nine months, 10 months, 12 months. And by the way, when they work, they are the best. And I thought, oh God, you know, this is bad. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, a couple months later, I gave up on it and I'm looking through Craigslist and I see this, uh, cause I like to buy amps and sell them and tinker and tear them apart. And, and um, I saw this ad that said bad cat spring cleaning sale. And so I, I got in my car and I drove down to La, uh, La Palma and Ava, Anaheim and I went into the shop and there was James and Debbie and Shay and Tim. And I said, what do I got to do to get a cub? And so uh, he said, well, give me a credit card. So I handed him my credit card. And like I told Mark earlier, earlier today, I'm probably the only guy on earth that paid full price for an app and then bought the company three months later. And that's how smart I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I gave him my credit card, and then um, I noticed that the, the building seemed kind of like bare. You know, there was like mail stacked up in the corner and an empty pallet of speakers, and it just kind of had that sort of like look like it was in trouble. And um, so I had struck up a conversation with him. I thought, you know, I, I wonder if I'm going to get this amp, you know? So I, you always hear those tales like you read on the gear pages about, you know, people getting screwed. And so I started making it a habit of going down there at lunchtime. And um, I would bring little, you know, old 68 showmen and, you know, different pieces I had collected over the years and I'd show them to him. And he mentioned to me that he was looking to sell the business and that he had a company by the name of Hanser that was interested in, in acquiring it. And uh, so I went and I did a little research on Hanser and it looked to me like Hanser was the kind of company that would come along and take American brands that were kind of on their backs and, um, you know, revitalize that brand, build the product overseas and pop them into guitar centers and Sam Ashes. And so then, um, you know, I talked to him and I said, well, it'd be kind of a shame to sell Bad Cat to a company like that, you know, kind of a boutique artisan kind of product. And so I went to the company that I worked for, the owner of the company I worked for, and his name is George. And I told him, look, I've saved up a little bit of money. I'm thinking about maybe making a run at buying the Sam company because it's kind of one of my passions. Mm. And he said, well, let's do it together. And so we struck up this deal. We, over the course of the next three or four months, we got in some crazy bidding war and we probably paid too much for the business and we bought it. And then we brought in all of these engineers and we just started hitting it with all these different ideas. And, and James, it was just, it just went really south quickly with him there. And that didn't work out. So he, he left. Um, we asked him to leave. And then uh, about five years later, uh, I had made the decision that I wanted to buy my partners out and move the business and run it myself because they, weren't, they, were, they were not really amp people. And I had sort of um, you know, done all I could do at Inductors, Inc. I'd been there for 18 years. I was kind of over the whole magnetics thing. And so I made the uh, the brilliant decision to uh, start with a large fortune and create a small one. <laughs> and that's well, what, and that's and that's what I've done. <laughs> Here I am. And there well, you go. Well, it's, it, but you know, it's a very well known name of of, of amps. And uh, mm -hmm. you guys, can you describe like what the uh, the typical sound of your amps are they're based on matchless amps or vox type style yeah amps? They're, they're sort of hot rotted hot rotted boxes um a lot of string to string note definition kind of smoother top end um you know one of the things i did immediately was i when i walked in the door in 2011 was i noticed that there was there were nine different chassis sizes and 14 different transformers and six or seven or 12 different box sizes and that just seemed insane to me. There was no way you could control your inventory like that. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I started noticing, and I, I literally took out this, this chart, and I put down every model and every feature that was on every amp, you know, tube complements and, and multi-channels, EF86 and the V1, and I laid it all out. And I realized that we only made four things. You know, there were just slight variations of four different products. Mm -hmm. And so then I said, okay, well, we make, we make hot cats, cubs, and black cats. That's really all we make. You know, the wild cat was just a black cat with EL34s in the power section. Mm -hmm. And so I just called that the black cat 40. And I sort of rearranged everything. 
I went out and I got everything into one chassis size. You know, we had hired engineers and we brought in, you know, we had one chassis size, one cabinet size, you know, um, and the, the, the thing about it is coming from the magnetics en engineering uh, side of things, I had access to, you know, uh, transformer designers that, you know, uh, guitar amplifiers were like Legos, you know, it was yeah, a joke. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so they took a look at all of the transformers that we that we were using from TDS, and they reverse engineered them and took them all apart, and you know, made detailed schematics for each one. And they came to me and said, "Look, there's only really two designs here. You know, what we can do is I, I can make we can make one transformer that will work for everything." And so what we they did is they put together. It took us a year and a half to two years, but we literally have one output transformer that works with. The Hot Cat Thirty, the Cub Fifteen—I mean, everything. You know, there was there were different sizes. Now the Cub transformers were a lot bigger than they used to be. But the bottom line is, I only have to stock one set of power transformers and output transformers, mm -hmm. uh, one choke, one chassis size, you know, one head size cabinet. And so I was able to, you know, go to my suppliers and say, well, you know, instead of buying forty chassis at a time, I could buy five hundred or a thousand at a time. Yeah, I could take my costs and cut them in, you know, two thirds or more. Mm -hmm. And so that was the idea was to be able to, to, to deliver the same thing, but for a lot less money. And that's kind of what I did. And I, I think to a large degree, I may have in some ways, maybe even hurt the brand by doing that in a sense, because I'm out there selling, you know, hand wired cubs for like 1900, 1800. And people are looking at me going, why is that 1800? And why is this one 2400? This one must be better than that one. Mm -hmm. But what they, they don't realize that I've, you know, I've taken the approach of, well, I, I'm going to try to sell it for as least amount of money as I can. Maybe not my smartest move, but that's what I'm doing. Well, have customers responded, you know, liking the, the new changes to the kind of uniform things or? Yeah, very, very much. I mean, um, you know, I think because, you know, oftentimes we get, you know, the O3s and the O7s and the O6s that come in here for repairs all the time. And I, I play them side by side. And they, they sound great, but honestly, they don't stack up to the new stuff. The new stuff is better. It's more reliable. It's more quiet. You know, it just, um, what, what amazed me is I walked in the door in 2011 and here was this $3,000 212 combo that didn't have channel switching. Right. And there's a three, $350 PV at Guitar Center that has channel switching. You know, and it doesn't have an effects loop. And why are we using two sides of the phase inverter? Because now I've got effects loop on the what channel A and effects loop for channel B, and it just yeah, that, that's all came from Matchless. Yeah, none of it made any sense. And so I thought, well, I mean, I'm sure Match. I'm not. I'm not here to disparage Matchless. I'm just saying that that was something I wanted to do to kind of modernize it. Yeah, you sure. Know? And I think that, and there's certainly validity in in saying, well, you know, we're making this exactly as it was made in 1992. And that there's validity in that, and people will pay for that, and they want that. But that's not what we're about. We're we're pushing things forward and trying to do different things. And like that, the K Master circuit was was invented by a 75 year old aerospace engineer. I had nothing to do with it. You know, he just came in and said, "I got a better way to do master volume. I think I can let me try something." Hmm. And it was we utilized op amps post phase inverter. It's a it's a cool circuit. Yeah, cool. But just, you know, just stuff like that, you know. Oh, well, tell, tell me the story, as you were telling me earlier, um, about when you were selling stuff and you got all these different people who came by to buy the stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so where, where I'm at in, um, in Orange County is sort of the aerospace capital of the world in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. I mean, you had Hughes Aircraft and Boeing and L3 and Northrop Grumman, and they were all within 10 miles of here. And so what's funny is, is consequently because of that, um, this, this area, you know, Fountain Valley and Costa Mesa and Garden Grove is just filled with 70 to 80 year old aerospace engineers that are retired. And so when you, you know, you have like old transformers and caps and pots and things that you want to, you know, clear out some space. I don't have a huge shop. I've got a, you know, it's a 2000 square foot little place and, and so um, I'll, I'll take that obsolete inventory and I'll put it on Craigslist. And what happens is you, you, you put it out there for Saturday morning and all of these, you recognize them. They come up and they got the, literally the pocket protectors and sort of the old short sleeve shirts and mm -hmm. 
you know, they come walking in and they, and the first thing is when they see a tube, it's like, Oh, what, what's that? And the boom. And they go, mm -hmm. and these guys will come in and, you know, they'll, they'll say, Hey, I just want to get out of the house, you know, keep me in the coffee and uh, give me your problems. And these, there's some brilliant, you know, engineers that are, you know, that all live around here that they, I've, become friends with about seven or eight of these guys and they spend so much time down here helping me solve problems that's awesome that's cool just, that's great yeah just, just kind of fortunate yeah it's super cool and, of, and gives them something to do too oh yeah they love it you know they absolutely love it i learned a lot from them and and they uh plus they get to play with tubes i mean these are old tube guys right right yeah yeah they're having a blast except they probably look at the tubes that are made today and, and cringe yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're, 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 they they dealt with aerospace space tubes. Uh, that was a whole different kind yeah, of yeah, no, whole different world, you know, whole different world. Yeah, high rail stuff, you know. Yeah, and, and we our stuff these days is not high rail; it's low rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. do you do you use any EF eighty sixes in your amps, David? No, all like sevens. Too, yeah. too finicky. Uh, too finicky in the high game. Too games. finicky. Yep. Too yeah. finicky. Yeah. Why you use yeah, that, that's just asking for trouble. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, you know, I've never been called smart. So yeah, I mean yeah. that's yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there was a lot of classic circuits that had the EF eighty sixes, but you can't really get good EF eighty sixes really anymore, or low microphonic ones at least. Yeah. And so that's a whole nother issue, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I've, I've had luck with the uh, the electro harmonics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The JJ EF eight hundred six has been, you know, I, I end up throwing away about, you know, ten percent or twenty percent of them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this squealing, howling, and oh. yeah, yep. That's the that's the problem. That's the uh, that's the the bed you made, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so 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 Dave, how how did you? I mean, you probably said us how do you how do you get in this business? Um. I moved to California from Detroit when I was 18 years old in 1988, 87, 88, and uh, started working for Andy Brower Studio Rentals at the time, doing uh, studio instrument rental cartage uh, things for famous uh, studio guitar players. And um, then I sort of, uh, that kind of like, uh, he had a he had a guy that did uh, rack setups for for people, and he left the company, and then I was there watching it the whole time. I'm like, I think I can do that for you. Yeah. And then I, I kind of got into doing rigs and stuff for touring guitar players. Um, for a while, I was at a store called Making Music, doing rigs. Sure. Sure. For people in the early in the early uh, early nineties, and then. Uh, Eventually, I went out on my own and, and was just doing rigs. And then, uh, oh, also in the early 90s, I got involved with Bruce Eggnator. So okay. all, the, all the early Eggnator amps were a joint venture between him and I. That's where I was really learning a bunch of stuff. But I, cause I'm the one that convinced him to make the first preamp because um, okay. I knew him from Michigan. Yeah. And, uh, and so I learned a lot of what I know from him originally then early on when I was a baby and yeah. um, a wee lad and uh, and I got that that product and I, I would tweak that product and stuff early on uh, learned enough about electronics by that point to you know do that kind of stuff and uh, just parlayed over the years into you know eventually making my own amp line yeah. were, were you um, I used to go down to this um, there was a, a small shop down in Orange County. It was an orange. It was called Tone Merchant. Well, yeah. So Tone, I'm, you, I'm, I'm, I'm part of those guys. I um, Rob is now my partner in Friedman. Okay. Rob, Rob who owns it um, currently, he didn't wasn't the original owner of Tone Merchants. So depending on uh, when I, when we first got together as partners uh, in Friedman. Uh, he still owned the store down there, and then eventually it moved up here. Okay, because so I I remember going down there, and it was never open. I would, I would drive down there, and I'd bunk, 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 bunk. That was probably when Rob owned it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Because yeah. I was, you know, I was a certified gear junkie, man. I, I was in there and I had a credit card and I was ready to piss my wife off and buy something cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was never open. That's well. hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Rob was sleeping in. Yeah. Well, like when he had it himself towards the end, it was like, uh, uh, yeah, sometimes he wouldn't be there because he was the only guy working. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I actually I did get in one time, and it was pretty cool. They had you know a lot of really cool guitars hanging on the wall, and there was a. Mm -hmm. I, I remember your amps. I remember going, oh look at those. It yeah, that was cool. early on. Yeah, that was the yeah. early, the early amps that I had started. Yep. Was it early Friedman's or or Marshall's? Yeah. Well, first Marshall, and then 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 yeah, it didn't come become Friedman until later. Gotcha. That's right. I think it said yeah, it said Marsha, right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then we got a nice cease and desist letter eventually, and <laughs> you know, from from Marshall. So, well, it caused you to have your own your own branded name. Friedman, same amp, just branded a different name. So, yeah, that's cool. Cease and desist. I've got a couple of those. I, got, I actually got a, I got a, I got a funny story. One time, I was um, my cell phone rang, and I, I, I didn't look down to see who it was. Just kind of hello, and uh, it was this voice, and he said. Hey, uh, this is Hartley Peavy. And I thought, there's no freaking way Hartley Peavy is calling him on my cell phone right now. This is one of my a-hole buddies spoofing on me. So I'm like, uh, oh, hey, Hartley, how the hell are you? <laughs> and he said, well, uh, Ron, Ron Beinstock gave me your phone number. And I'm like, oh, crap, this this is Hartley Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, oh, sorry about that. I, I thought you were somebody else. He goes, well, you got this amp called the Classic Cat 50, and I was kind of thinking as a gentleman that maybe you could come up with another name for it. And I said, oh, you got the Classic. Okay, okay, I, I get it. No problem. Uh, certainly, I'll come up with something else. Because we had an ad in Guitar Player Magazine that had the Classic mm -hmm. Cat 50. And I said to him, well, by the way, that Viper of yours, right? What is that last little dial that says B cat? What is that supposed to be? And he said, "Oh, that's uh, that's." Uh, I go, "No, no, no. I, I, I'm flattered that you would put Bad Cat on, you know, a modeling app." But I, I was so, um, I was freaked out that, I, that that he had called me. I'm like, "Who the hell? How would he call me?" Oh, you know what? I got I got another funny story about him. Do you know Gary Sunda? No, no. Okay, Gary Sunda was the vice president of Randall. With Don mm -hmm. Randall, and uh, they had an amp called the Switchmaster, and mm -hmm. uh, PV had done an ad in a magazine that said, "I've worked 22 years of my life on this amp, and it's great." Right? It was hardly in the ad. And well, Gary had gone down to the photographer where they were shooting the the piece for the, um, you know, the, the ad advertisement for the Switchmaster Randall amps. And the photographer at the last minute said, hey, Gary, just uh, just put your leg up on there and pose with the amp. He's like, okay. So he gets up there and he poses. And then um, so he brings all the proofs back to Don Randall. Don Randall goes through all the proofs, and he sees the last one with Gary leaning on it. And he decides, oh, I got something I can do with this. And so you know, Gary thinks nothing of it, goes away. Well, the next year he's at the NAMM show, and he goes in to say hi to Hartley Peavy. And they said, oh, uh, Hartley's not seeing you, Gary. Why? Oh, he, he's pissed off about that ad you did in the magazine. What ad? Oh, you know that one where you made fun of Hartley? I don't remember doing that. So he goes back and talks to Randall. Well, apparently they did this. Uh, what does it say exactly? He, keep it on there right there. Don't. Okay. I worked 22 months on the Switch math Master amplifier, and it's great. Uh, so instead of 22 years, right? Right. But I, yeah. I one day I was browsing. Well, Gary had told me this story, and one day I was browsing on eBay. I found this. I go, holy shit, that's the ad he was telling me about. Wow. <laughs> so I, I, I found it on – It was this is like from 1974 or something. I know it's an old guitar player magazine. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. And Hartley – Hartley yeah. wasn't into that. Yeah, he did not. He did not I'd think be that was kind of irritated too. I think. <laughs> yeah. So what yeah. did he say to you about the bad cat switch on the Viper amp? Uh, he just kind of stammered for about thirty seconds. 
And then uh, I said, no, 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 I, I'm totally cool with it, man. I, uh, I, I take it. I'm, I'm flattered that you would do that. But by the way, it doesn't sound the least bit like a bad cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it didn't. Um, but then you ended up changing the name? Yeah, we call it the Fat Cat or something else. It was, it was an app I ended up discontinuing after a while anyway. Gotcha. Just a, it was a basement style circuit, big, fat, round, you know. Mm -hmm. I still get calls for it, though, once in a while. So tell me about these Friedman guitars I've been lusting after. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a joint venture with Grover Jackson and myself. Never heard, never heard of him. Who's never heard of him? Yeah, no, I'm, kid no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> They're, uh, I don't know, they're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like a, basically the idea behind the whole thing was, um, uh, you know, vi vintage vibe and, and sound with kind of more modern playability. Right, right. Um, High-end guitar, but, but, but one that felt played. Yeah. You know? Like a broken end. Broken in, yeah. And most people really, after they play them, are like, yeah, that does that. God, it really feels old. Mm, right. You know, so they're, they're, they're into it generally. Yeah, he's got the so, relicing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Which the is, aging. The aging, yeah. Which is interesting because... We don't want I mean, to cease and desist from Fender. <laughs> no. Oh, there you go. It did, why, they, uh, have a, they actually have a, a... Relic. You can't use relic. Really? No, 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 no. I had no idea. No, that's, that's a fair word. Name. Yep. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I meant aging. Aged. Aging. Aged. Aged. Worn in. Um, so, but how is that, how is that, um, that skill acquired? Because, I mean, he never really did that when he, back in the day, did he? Uh, he has a guy that used to work at Fender. Oh. Shortcut. Uh, and actually, that and and that does it better than, maybe better. <laughs> I think he does it amazingly. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a pretty good job. I mean, you know, hey, you know, uh, aged guitars aren't for everyone. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of heat from that with a bunch of people, but um, I'll tell you, uh, it, it's awfully nice, I, and for me at least, I, I love the fact that I can lay the guitar down anywhere. Mm -hmm, and I don't right. worry about it one bit. Uh, you right. know, it's just like, oh, whoops, I got another scratch. Oh, well. Um, it looks better. But I like beat up guitars. So I like old guitars. I like, you know, beat up guitars. And here's the thing I mean, you know, someone can argue with me on this uh, all they want. Um, but when you're, when you're using nitro lacquer and you're aging an instrument and taking finish off an instrument, it does change the tone of the instrument also. Uh, if you take a finish off of a wood surface, it changes how it sounds. Mm. Just as if you have a raw body versus a painted body, no matter what it's painted with. It will sound different when it was raw than when mm -hmm. it was painted. So if you take the finish off a Les Paul guitar, the Les Paul will sound different off the back of the neck. It'll mm. sound different. I believe that. Uh, you know, it's just like if you if you make a cabinet without Tolex on it, it sounds different than a Tolex cabinet. Yeah. It makes sense. Think about it. It's just like you have a resonating piece of wood, even in a cabinet, and then what you do is put a thick cloth over it. <laughs> so damp dampening it. It dampen it dampens the, the it changes the resonance of the Yeah, I, I always wondered why uh Ed Eddie Van Halen took off the Tolex on his. Sounds different. Yep. I love cabinets without Tolex. Oh my God, those sound great. Hmm. I've made some of them before. Just they never Tolex them and they just sound always sound really cool. Yeah, I was I was uh, whenever I'm making an amp for myself to take home, I always steal the speakers off the test bench. You know, because I want them all beat up and worn in and Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh sound speakers up. sound way different br br broken in. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Night and day. Like way, way different. Yeah. Uh, I always swipe them off the bench. <laughs> so, but you can with Friedman guitars also order them non-aged. So that that is. And you'll be seeing more non-aged guitars with like the Metro D line, the set neck line, because mm -hmm. a lot of those are pretty tops and you know, it's like you don't want to age them. 
Mm -hmm. That's cool. So, um, John, getting back to you, um, yeah. can you take us through like each of the different amps that you have, like the different lines of the amps and like the different tones that you kind of would expect to, you know, to get from them or kind yeah, of styles? Yeah. Sure, sure. Like, um, first off, we have, we have two basic lines. We have the Legacy, which is the, you know, point to point hand wired. Um, and there are, there are four basic models there. You have um, the Black Cat, which is the, you know, sort of the original, sort of the derivative of the DC-30 that was brought over originally from Matchless. It was the, you know, AX7 Channel 1, EF86 Channel 2 with the tunnel selector and the bass and treble. Um, that is more of a, I realize when I use the word high gain, the company I'm sitting with right now, what I do is not high gain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's, for us, it's high, you know, higher gain. Um, so the EF86 side. So it's kind of like a you know 90s Cheryl Crow kind of sound you get out of that amp. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes in a 15, a 30. So you got two EL84s, four EL84s, or it comes in a 40 watt with two EL34s. And then we have the Cub, which is um, my favorite. I mean, I, that's my favorite amp by far. Um, it's a single channel with a, a switchable V1 preamp. You can go AX7 or EF86. Um, they all have the all amps have the K masters on them. Um, you know, and it comes in a 15, a 30, or a 40 as well. Same configuration, you know, two EL34s. That is basically it's a single channel black cat. You can kind of get the two channels of the black cat, though there's a little more gain in the cub. Um, and it's a little warmer sounding than the black cat. The black cat still has that bright, strident, you know, kind of voxy thing going on. The cubs kind of soften that up a little bit. Um, and then we have the hot cat, which is, uh, you know, there's two, two channels. You have the clean channel, which is, you know, volume, bass, treble, K master, reverb. And it goes from, you know, sparkling clean all the way through kind of 70s crunch. Mm -hmm. And then the hot cat channel two starts at 70s crunch and works its way into you're scaring the kids, you know, when it's wide <laughs> open. Um, and then we have, you know, the Fender style stuff, which is the, you know, the class of deluxe, which is our take on that sort of Fender style circuit. We use a class, we use a, the K Master. Um, it's spanky, clean, punchy, you know, it gains up. It'll get that kind of 70s Rick Derringer kind of sound that sort of, um, you know, there's a lot of guys back in the 70s who were using Gibson guitars and Fender amps and just cranking them wide open, you know, like Ted Nugent and those guys. You get that kind of sound out of it. And then we have the player series stuff, which is um, we make the cubs. So we take essentially all the parts of the hand wired amps. You know, in fact, I even thought about doing an ad where I would, I would show you know on a table literally all the parts it took to make a hand wired cub. You know, and just sort of lift off the handful of wire and replace it with a board and say, "There's the piece. There's the PCB cub," because mm -hmm. that's essentially what it is. It's just the same amp, same parts, same chassis, same cabinet. You know, just on a PCB. Mm -hmm. And so we have the Cub, the Cub 15, and we have the Cub 40. Um, there is the Classic Pro, which is the Fender style. And then in, uh, in January, I'm going to be doing the, um, the Hot Cat 30 on a PCB in the Player Series. Mm -hmm. And those are, you know, those are, those are $1,400, bucks, $1,500, bucks, you know, in a 112 combo, $1,200 bucks in the head. And they're made right here in my shop. You know, I'm probably, uh, if I w uh, was better at accounting, I could probably tell you how much money I'm losing on them. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, so do you, do you think they sound any different than the hand wire ones? No, not really. I mean, honestly, no. And I, I realize I'm probably not doing myself any favors by saying that. But, but honestly, no, I, I don't think they do. You know, the first, the first couple of go rounds, we, we ran the boards and we did test A, B. And yeah, they did sound different, you know, and, and um, but we just kept changing the layouts and playing with the layouts. And believe it or not, moving those layouts just a little bit and changing a ground plane. And I mean, it, it just made huge differences. And about the third time we cut the boards, we, we thought, you know, that's it. We got it. Nailed it. That's cool. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Um, oh, oh, the Unleash. The Unleash. I almost forgot about the Unleash. Okay. Uh, we have a, um, around, uh, let's see, six years ago, I had a, a five watt mini cat that I had wired the output into a 3000 watt QSC class D amp. 
and I put that into a 212 cabinet, and I brought it in, I showed the engineers, I go, look at this, I got a 3,000 watt, 5 watt amp, and it cranked it, and blasted it out in the office, and um, it sounded like crap, and <laughs> so then we sort of figured out why, because we didn't have a reactive load, and so the guys that we had in house, you know, inside of 15 minutes, wired up and made a little reactive load with a wound toroid and the cap and a little RLC network. And um, that led to building uh, the idea being we wanted to build a box that where you could take all those little, there was a bunch of little tiny terrors, and everybody had a one watt this and a five watt that. And we wanted to make a box that you could take that one watt amp, plug it in, and then you could gig with that thing and plug it into one of Dave's 412s, and it would be just you know loud as hell. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with the Unleash idea. Well, I had the Unleash at the, the NAMM show, and Phil X, and you know Phil. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he came up to me, and he just he grabbed my face, and he's like, buddy. He goes, this, <laughs> is, the, this is the greatest invention ever. He goes, but I need two volume controls. And it's got to take a 100-watt input. And I thought, oh, yeah, an effects loop. And I'm like, he's right. So we went back, scrapped the whole project, created a reactive load that would take a 100-watt input, um, you know, designed it with a, an effects loop, you know, two volume controls. And I, the first one, I boxed it up, and I sent it to Phil. <laughs> and he wrote, he wrote back and goes, that's it. That's it. And, of course, he blew it up. Because we had all, we had all you know, the very early ones, two or, the first two or three hundred, we had all kinds of design problems with it. But uh, it took us a couple of years to get it right. But yeah, it's it's, a, it's basically an attenuator booster. It'll it'll make a loud thing loud, a quiet thing loud, and a loud thing quiet. And we did that. I think this is probably six or maybe seven years ago. Now we made that box. Mm -hmm. hmm. And we didn't still, patent the still thing. Selling them? Yeah, yeah, not not a lot. You know, they're maybe fifty, sixty a month. You know, something like that. Not a ton. But yeah, there's a few. And what'd you say, Dave? About a patent? No, I said I, I didn't patent any of it. It's all, oh, all you, you know, yeah. Another one of my genius moves. <laughs> and then uh, Fryak comes along and does the tube version of it. He certainly did. And you know yeah. what? That's uh, he. We didn't do it on purpose. We didn't use the tube output on purpose. Yeah. Because I believe he's in violation of a patent. And I'll let whoever owns that patent look it up, but uh, that's why we we stopped. We had to use the Class D. So I'll let that lie right there. I I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think you do. Yep. Certain mm -hmm. other amp company. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll leave that there. Oh, I had I a question. I don't know if it is though, but anyway. <laughs> Well, we we had a couple we had a couple attorneys look at it and they said it was. We they, they said in our opinion it would be it would be just too risky to do it. Apparently not that risky, but uh, in the, his opinion anyway. Interesting. And we, we wanted to do another. There was another thing we wanted to do that we could do with class D that we couldn't do with tubes, and uh, that we're going to do sometime summer next year, I think. Cool. Hey, we had a question from uh, Lewis who had asked, uh, we were talking last night and you mentioned this to me. So you mentioned Hanser before, but wasn't there um, a Hanser Bad Cat series? Could you talk there about that? Can you talk about yeah. those? Yeah, in um, uh, 2010, just prior to us acquiring the business in September of 2011, James had signed an arrangement with Hanser to produce the Cougar series. And they had, they had I think, a 5 watt, a 15 watt, and a, and a 50 watt that were you know loosely based on some of the bad cat models. And I think they were actually designed by James Brown. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And they went on for about, you know, a year and a half to two years before they even produced a first article. But by that time we had already bought the company and we had learned that there wasn't anything we could do about it, that they, that that arrangement was, was in stone. And that the only thing that we could do was we had, one small provision in the contract that allowed us to uh, approve. Uh, two of the products had been approved, and we went back and we said, look, we want them to use uh, vintage 30 speakers in them, and we want you to use uh, real Baltic birch caps. And so we, we sort of forced that upon them, 
And you know, they were they were fine. There was it's it just the problem we knew was it was going to damage us from a reputation standpoint. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't put them on the website. We sort of kept the two things separate. It created a lot of confusion. In fact, I, I still get calls on them. You know, these days asking about what happened and what those were, and you know, and I I don't I don't have the parts to repair them. Um, you know, I just take the calls and I, re, I refer them to Hanser and say, here, you know, they've got the parts, they can fix them, they've got the schematics. Mm-hmm. It's kind of their deal. But yeah, it was a little funny kind of a transition, you know, thing that, that occurred right just before we bought it and then implemented just after we 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 acquired it. And uh, the only person who made a nickel on that was James. We we never saw a dime on that thing. Oh wow. So but they're no longer in production or anything like that. Right, right, they're not. Yeah, yeah. They're not. Um, I'm going to jump over to some questions here. Um, Black Vulture had a question for you, Dave. He wants to know if you're still doing the event at Motor City Guitar this month? Yes. All, all the events should be – a few of them have been announced by individual dealers. Uh, the event – our event page will go up on social media in the next day or two. So it'll have all the dates of all the stuff I'm doing. Okay. And then I'm coming to Europe, people. So is that confirmed? Yes, I'm going to Europe uh, and we'll be there, uh, Germany and England and uh, all that good stuff starting November. I think I arrived November 5th. Hmm. Cool. And when do you get back? A couple weeks later. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so two what, weeks, two weeks on the west, uh, on the Midwest and East Coast, and uh, back for you know five five days or so, and then gone again for another two weeks. My wife loves me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. Oh man! Oh, were you going to be back on the 29th? The 29th, yes, of October. Uh yes. Okay, then I can confirm our next Yes, guess. I will be. Would that work for you? Uh, I think for, so. For a show? Should. Okay. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, and let's see. Uh, James Kohler Music says, Dave, really looking forward to seeing you and Sammy at your clinic in Pittsburgh. Nice. That's cool. Uh, BV Ninja's here. Um yeah, where Craig, are we going to all be? I can tell. I can actually tell you guys the dates. You will see it on social media. Let me. I'll dig it up here. Um. So it's. Uh, I mean, the first one, which guitar. Uh, first one's in uh, October thirteenth. The guitar riot in Ohio. Um, October fifteenth at End Stuff Music. Hmm. Which is I have no idea where it is. <laughs> it's, in, it's, in, uh, it's in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. We, yeah, yeah, Pittsburgh. So there's there's the Pittsburgh date, uh, October seventeenth at Chuck Levin's Washington Music. Um, we have uh, to do. Um, there is a Sam Ash in in New York. Um, and you know what? I, I'd have to look at the doc for that date. I think it's around October 20th, I think. And, uh, Matt's music, October 22nd and Chicago music exchange on the 25th and motor city guitar on the 27th. So, um, Chicago music exchange and motor city guitar will be with Steve Stevens. Uh, for the clinic, uh, all the rest of the dates are with Sammy Bowler, and actually, I think the dates with Steve Sammy's going to play with him too for some of it. Oh, cool! That's not quite worked out yet, but we, we think so. Very At least cool. That's what was mentioned? <laughs> yeah, let me know what the date is at Sam Ash, because I may I may be up there. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. You think I it's the twentieth? Find out uh, here. I'll find out. Hang. I'll find out for sure. I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure it's the same date. I think it's Saturday, October 20th. Then it's the 20th. Yeah, it's Saturday the 20th. Okay. Yeah, pretty 
pretty positive it's that. Um, although I'm going to go look right now. So gotcha. um, I just have to go to my email and really okay. dig the, the real thing up. All right. Well, while you're looking, I'll say hi to a couple folks. Um, we have Tessie Switch. What's up, Rob from Tessie Switch? Um, and I know we have some other questions. Oh, Tessie Switch says PV was making Buddha in Mississippi up until about four years ago. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, Vinny Moretti, uh, so he answered that question, Vinny, about when he's coming out your way. So if you're going to make it into New York, let me know. Um, so we have a question from Chris. What's the flagship bad cat amp? Oh God! You know, I think I think probably the Hot Cat 30R. I think that's what everybody thinks of because it, 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 there's nothing it can't do. I mean, it, it'll go from sparkling clean all the way through near metal gain, and I think that's probably the flagship. I mean, it'll do. You know, it's our most expensive. <laughs> I guess that, that would make it partially the flagship. Mm. Okay, but yeah, I think the Hot Cat 30R. Okay. Um, so we had a question from Dan Pfeiffer. I think we already covered this, Dan, about Mark Sampson's involvement in Bad Cat. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I've I've run into Mark a couple of times, and um, honestly, if 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 somebody knows how to get a hold of him, I would appreciate that. I, I, I there's a couple. We talked at a couple of Nam shows, and he had an interest in maybe, you know, working on some projects together. And I'm way open to doing that. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I, I was correct, Mark. It's the October twentieth, uh, New York, Sam Ashton, New York. Okay. And uh, yeah, I was correct. Oh, no, we lose Dave. Looks like it. Oh no, he, he must have correct. He must have uh, clicked the wrong button. He hung up on himself. There he is. There he is. Wait, what happened? There he is. <laughs> He's trying to come up, trying to come back. Dave, you there? Um, so if anybody knows how to get a hold of Mark Sampson, uh, email john at backhatamps.com. There you go. Uh, L. Scott Music asked, is the Runt a PC board amp? It is. It is. So um, it's not a hand-wired amp. Uh, huh. Where did I go? Here he is. You're back? Oh, yeah, but no video. I don't know why there's no video. Oh, wait. Maybe I see. Hey, there. That's weird. Okay. There he is. I'm back. Are you back? There you are. Okay. That was weird. It's still not working. Weird. It's still kind of working weird. Well, we I'm see. You sign out and sign back on. Okay. I'll be back. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> I'll be back. Well, I'm um, heading off. Um, I am heading to Japan this month. Oh yeah. A, uh, yeah, a dist distributor of ours called uh, Shimamura Music. Um, is flying me out there for some dealer clinics where I'm going to be doing a tour of Tokyo oh, yeah. and a bunch of different areas. Yeah. Hey, Dave. There uh, he is. I have no idea what happened. I just kind of went all bloop crazy, and then maybe because I was on too many tabs at once, then it didn't like it. I don't know. Hmm. I thought you maybe clicked the wrong tab off or something. Um, so what were you saying, John? So you're going to Tokyo and yeah, how long uh, you going? I'm going to be there for just for six days. Um, Shimamura Music is flying me out there to do some in-store clinics. I guess there's going to be four or five different guitar shops in, in Tokyo they want me to, to be at and meet people. And I guess there's a trade show of some kind there. Again, I don't, I don't have the exact dates, but it's 19th, 20th, 21st, something like that. I've got to be back by the 29th because it's my wedding anniversary. Well, you better be I, back I, for that. I tell you, I would not miss that. That's cool. Have you been out to Japan before? Never. Never. I'm, oh, I'm nice. kind of looking forward to it. Have you? I have not. 
No, I've, I've been to Europe, but I haven't been to, uh, you know, the that side of the, the world. I'd love to. Do I Dave back? Is Dave hmm? back? There he is. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, there he is. Yeah. Have you been, you've been to Japan, Dave, haven't you? Yes. Unfortunately, I had the displeasure of going uh, in uh, August once. That's oh. right. You told me that in the summer. Yeah, yeah. that that is um, not a time to go. Is that a guild on the wall behind you? Yes, it that? is. Nice. Guild S60. Right. I love yeah. those guitars. They really play great, and they really feel great. It's fine. It's it's weird. It just sits on your body really nice. It's it's cool. Mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of bizarre, but, mm. but uh, they're cool, though. And you can usually find them pretty cheap, too, if you, you find one. Yeah, I think I got it for six hundred dollars or something. Yeah, great Sat guitar. Back twenty-four fret guitar. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's twenty-four frets. Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a great neck on it too. It's really, really good guitar, actually. Huh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change the pick guard on it and change it out. Swap a new one and put mini humbuckers in it. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. Is that new? Is that new for you? No, it's been here. I know I've had it for several years. Huh. Okay. Actually, probably for all I know, five or six years. It's I say several, but right. Yeah. You know how that goes these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I still think. Yeah, the I got that. Uh, I got that like last year. Oh yeah, wait, the, that was six years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still think of the '90s as only ten years ago. So look at me. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like, well, so somebody uh, somebody wrote me the other day, and they said that um, I you know I turned fifty four in July. And they said, you are actually, I think they said, you are three years older than a Wilfred Brimley was in Cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> that is frightening. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I always joked, I, I, my, my oldest daughter turned 26 recently. She said, oh, my God, I'm 26. Can you believe it? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like going, just think, four more years to 30. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, stop. <laughs> mm. oh, I thought you were going to say it just made you feel older. Well, and then and then I also said to her, I go, oh, you do realize that um, my wife, Dina, was 24, when, younger than you when I first met her. She's mm. like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, oh, we had a question for John from Tessie Switch. Uh, what's the reason for using an EF86 preamp tube instead of a 12AX7 derivative? Well, I I like the sound of them. I, I think, you know, the problem with an EF86 is it, it's it's not a tube that you can use in a, you know, particularly mass-produced pro amp because the, the yield is so small. You know, they tend to be microphonic and howling and noisy, um, but they do yield... Uh, you know, some interesting characteristics. They're, they're a little gainier. Um, I tend to, they react really well to, you know, Dave knows this, but you, you put the 22 mic cap on the on the 100K ohm resistor on pin three, and those things just explode, man. The, the, they just get really fat sounding. All the, There's more lows, there's more highs, more more everything kind of. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a cool sound. Yeah, they're just, they're temperamental, you know, that's the problem. And, and they can go bad, you know, like a, like a, a teenager, you know, they <laughs> <laughs> unpredictable. Yeah, unpredictable. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Michael Shane's wants to know where can I try a bad cat? Well, we're not like Friedman. We're not everywhere. You know, we only mm -hmm. I have very you know sixteen or seventeen dealers, eighteen dealers. Uh, where where is he at? Where is he located? That I don't know. No. Well, on our website is our dealer list. Um, that's expanding by about, uh, like we just signed I think, about 12 new dealers on in the last two weeks. I haven't put them up on the website. Oh, but, great. Um, um, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I've, um, I've, I've actually, I've been selling direct as well, I mean, off our website. And the theory there being that they can buy from us, but there's a weight, you know, but if you want to buy from the dealer, they're, they're, they have stock on the shelves you can take it home today right but um that's been going well that's cool that's a good theory too mm -hmm. um 
Someone, I, I think this is for you, John, but they want to know how did the Bo Bonnie Rate thing happen from Gothy Goth Happy Sack? <laughs> Goth Happy Sack? Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's a good name. Well, Mr. Sack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was through a guitar, well, the guitar techs. I mean, those are the guys to get to know, right? Absolutely. And so, Bonnie's guitar tech had contacted James, and I think she was using a Jim Kelly or something at the time. And she'd gotten a hold of somebody had a Black Cat 30 that she had played at a show. And uh, she fell in love with the Channel 2, the F86 side. And then she had approached, uh, or her tech had approached James about building a single channel version of that amp. And that's what essentially what she plays is a single channel version of the. The Black Cat 30 Channel 2, which is essentially the the Cub Cub 330 that we we make now as a standard amp. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she's she's been playing that thing forever. In fact, when James left Bad Cat, he formed Blackwing Amps and tried to get her to play Blackwing Amps, and she took one. And her tech sent me a photograph of the Blackwing in the rack, but the Bad Cat on the floor with the mic in front of it. <laughs> That's all that matters. That's it. There right. you go. That's cool. That's cool. So, who? What other artists um, are playing Bad Cat apps? And so I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, you know, Kid Rock's band, and um, a lot of guys have them. Um, you know, uh, Green Day had them had them for a while, and you got uh, Young the Giant, and um, I mean the list is you know oh Steve Wilson, Porcupine Tree. Mm. Um, they're a good band. Yeah, you know what he we, he plays a Lynx, and that is just an absolutely amazing sound. I mean that that amp is incredible. Um, but he does this kind of he's got the old school one where you have the the live two channels, and so he he has a pedal where he rocks it all the way forward and it's in channel A, and he rocks it all the way back and it's in channel B, and he just mm -hmm. sort of blends the two channels together. Hmm. <coughs> Unique sound. That's cool. Um. I'm just going to go to some more questions here. Uh, so you you were mentioning before um, that you are you going to Nam? You guys set up at Nam? Yeah, yeah. I've got a. Um, you know what's funny is is um, the Nam show. I mean, you know, one thing I'm known for is is not uh, holding a whole a lot back. You know, t to me, the Nam show every year seems to be worth a little bit less. You know, to me. As a, mm -hmm. as a company, I mean, because essentially what you're there to do is, is ostensibly is to get new dealers. Well, you got the dealers you want, primarily. Um, so what are we doing there? You know, and you know, you get the magazines. They come in and they take videos, and you know, and I hope I'm not offending anybody, but I mean, you know, I just don't think that stuff works anymore. I, I don't think that the publishing a full page ad in a music magazine is particularly useful no I yeah i actually not. i think that's dead unfortunately it's all about instagram and it's all about social media various forms of social media and videos and youtube you know yeah because yeah, i mean that's exactly right because I, I mean um rob chapman from anderton's you know that that guy mm -hmm. he, he had he had stopped into our booth last year and he'd fallen in love with the Cub 40 player series, which is my favorite amp. It's the PCB Cub 40. And he wanted to get his hands on one and he, he bought one and I sent him out to the, sent it out to the UK. And, you know, he did three or four videos where he was mentioning it and playing it. And man, my web traffic just went, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, you know, and you, I, I paid for, I don't know, seven, 10,000 bucks with the banner ads on, I won't mention the website, but it was a, a prominent, you know, music magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my Google analytics or my, my, sorry, my, my website analytics showed me I had like 17 people that I clicked through, yeah. you know, seven, seven to $10,000 later. And I've had seven to 10 click throughs and I get, Somebody who has thirty thousand followers on Instagram does one video, and that that boosts my web traffic and sells product. Yeah, mm -hmm. those exactly. guys are selling. Those guys are selling product. I don't think magazines are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I used to subscribe to magazines 
all the time. I used to get Guitar Player, Guitar World, uh, Vintage Guitar Magazine. I used to get them all, right? And then slowly but surely as the internet just kind of took over, it just I stopped, I stopped those subscriptions. The only thing I have left now is Guitar World that I get on my iPad, you know? Right. And uh, I don't know. I, don't, I think you're right. I don't think that they're affected yeah, I mean, at all. Did, did Guitar Player go under yet? Or weren't, wasn't there some changes or weren't they getting? I think, I think Mike Molina was, was let go from there, right? Yeah. I, the... I mean, yeah, it's, 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 uh, you know, things are changing and I think, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta move with the times. It's not, uh, you know, the shopping mall is going away. Mm -hmm. you know, right. The, That's so uh, depressing. The, um, you know, uh, I mean, people still like to read books, but I think that's gone down quite a bit from where you know it once was. Um, yeah, all those people are being ebooks and stuff, and you know, reading it on their iPad. Well, uh, live, live, live television. I mean, how many shows do you say? Oh, it's it's eight o'clock on Thursday. I have to watch this. None. Like, none. Zero. Zero. Right? Nada. Right. Nada. In fact, I am seriously wondering why I still have my cable service even. Because yeah. almost all the shows are off Hulu or Netflix or Amazon or stuff that I watch. And and if not, I mean, regular TV, what? No, why? <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much because then you can watch it all the next day on YouTube. Almost how, about, every how, how about this? When When's the last time you actually mailed something? Like, right. As in regular mail, U.S. Post Service with a stamp, like a like a letter, not yeah. just a package. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah, yeah, not so, like a FedEx envelope or something where you need to FedEx something to someone, but uh, it, it that doesn't it. Uh, I I remember I you know I remember having to pay my bills with checks, you know, and mm -hmm. and you'd mail your stack of, of bills out, you know, and and some guy wanted me to send him something I had. Um, so send something like a sticker or something that I had that he wanted, and I'm like, well, he's like, well, can you send it? And I'm like, well, okay, but I actually have to go get stamps, and I don't know how fast that's gonna happen, you know? Okay. <laughs> like, I, I think it's literally like one once a year, maybe. In my desk drawer, I have a book of 16 Jimi Hendrix stamps that I bought four years ago, and I still have 12. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So one a year. Yeah, about one a year I mail something. I'm not sure what I did, but year. I mailed it. One At least year. those are cool stamps. Yeah, you know, I can mail you something, Dave, if you want one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had somebody who recently gave me some advice about, you know, reaching out to clients and uh, sending them a personal letter, you know. And, uh, right. And I thought it was a good idea. I still haven't done it. Um, but I thought it was a good idea, you know, because no one does it anymore. I right. just fall, fall over at their desk if they receive the letter from me. Yeah. My problem is my handwriting stinks because the that's last time you've forgotten how to write. Right, exactly. The last time I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a th that's actually a, at what point at what point do we forget how to physically write? Well, okay, so you know, well, and like like not, but like even younger younger people, come, you know, like growing up now. Oh, there's no there's cursive. Not there's no like. Do they even teach cursive anymore? I don't think they, so. They, they, my daughter's school does. How, mm -hmm. how many, how many phone numbers do you know? Like, oh, that's, that's the other thing. I, I, I yeah, yeah. There's, there's certain numbers that I have memorized from long time ago that were the same, yes. numbers, and I can still remember them. But if you ask me what my wife's phone number is, no way you wouldn't. Know. I, 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 I'm not exactly sure. I actually, I think I got that one memorized finally. But it used to be I memorized every number. And I, I knew it mm -hmm. them all by heart, like clients and all sorts of things, you know. Yeah. And yep. Uh, and now, so what happens? <laughs> this should be it should be very interesting uh, if if something ever happens in this world, you know, 
and uh, say uh, the cell service goes down or the internet goes down or, or both or, you know, I, I think there's going to be a bunch of people standing in the middle of the road, like going in circles, not knowing which way to go or what to do. Yeah. 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 Because they've forgotten. They don't know how to use a map. First off, they don't know what a map is. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, it, it's like at what point, how far do you get away from all these skills that we might have learned as a, as a kid? But a young person hasn't learned because they don't exist. I mean, there's, you know, it, it doesn't exist now. They're, all they know is the phone or looking something up on the web. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, you know, I was research. I was, research yeah. used to be going to the library, researching for a school paper, oh. going to the library. That's over. Do do a decimal system, you know, and mm -hmm. finding the book, and then getting your encyclopedia and looking, you know, looking it up physically the hard way. And uh, sometimes I think that was. A better way of doing things. I think you maybe well, you learned it. Better. Worked harder mm -hmm. at it. Well, I was I was taking my daughter to school about two weeks ago, and she had a, a chemistry test, and there was a particular thing that she wasn't sure about. I said, "Are you ready to go?" She goes, "Yeah, I just I forget how to figure out, and I can't even recall what it was she was talking about. I wouldn't understand it anyway." But anyway, so I said, "Well, why don't you just..." Check it on your phone. She, she gets her phone, types in, how do you? And she reads it. She goes, okay, I got it. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I, I, you know, I used to call information. Oh, yeah. All the time. 411 all the time. Ooh. Can you give me this number? Can you get me that number? Yeah, yeah. Now it's just yeah. go to Google. So, so, but I think there, there, there might be a... a something fundamentally wrong with this in the long run what if something does happen what if something changes what if you know uh, oh yeah there's gonna be a lot know, of people who don't know what to do a lot of people that are just kind of standing there especially if they're you know under the age of 30. well and who carries cash i mean it's another th you know another yeah. thing you know, how much green cash do you carry around at any given time and why why do you need it you I know, the, the only time I, I carry cash is someone pays me in cash. Yeah, I rarely carry cash. It's a bad it's a bad habit because of just the, that very thing. You know, yeah. whenever whenever we have a hurricane coming, that's like the first thing that we do is make sure you have like a, you know, a lot of cash. Some, yeah, just some cash just in case, you know, everything goes down. Mm -hmm. I need to go. Well, yeah. Work. That that's another thing. What you know, all the money we have, they're just digits on a computer somewhere yeah 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 man the, the, seriously the, the, the life could come to an end as we know it <laughs> very right. very easily almost oh, uncomfortably easy, easily it is know? very easy this, this is the sort of conversation you have around a dorm over a bong i mean this, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's true yeah that's anyway true. back to guitar amps <laughs> <laughs> um oh, this doom and gloom Hey, let's see. Uh, all right, so that was for Craig Guitar Wannabe. He said, who's going to NAM? So we're all going to NAM. Yep. Um, uh, let's see. Dave, can you talk about Cantrell uses his channels? Is it clean and gain channel? I was going to say you can go watch that video. Um, he says it is a clean and gain channel with any OD pedals on top of his gain channel, just straight gain. The, only, gain. Time, the only time he has an OD or a boost is uh, for lead playing. Um other than that, one amp is a BE uh, uh, style channel, uh, not super high gain. Gains are backed off around one o'clock. Mm. Um, and then the other amp is the JBE sound out of his amp, and also the gains backed off around one o'clock or two o'clock ish area. So it's not as gainy, or it's not as dimed up as you think it is. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I when I've heard it's very warm sounding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely not. It's not cutting at all. I've got, so, so I've got a question. Mm -hmm. So, so Dave, when you're sitting around, you know, the house and you're playing guitar and you want to plug into something, what do you plug into? I don't have an amp at home. Just guitar, acoustic, I electric. I don't have a guitar at home. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm here six days a week. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's smart. Maybe that's why I'm making yeah. a mistake. I, I I'm here six days a week, and on Sunday I don't do anything associated with my business. Right. I actually don't do much of anything on Sundays. Uh, so that that's how that works. I don't have a life. <laughs> I don't have a life. Uh, I have no hobbies. My hobby is this. What about, you? Yeah. what about you, John? What do you plug into? I have a Cub 40. I, I love that amp. And I, I play in bands. I mean, I've got two little, you know, um, you know, cover bands I play in. I, I just, I, I love it, man. I, I, it's a disease for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got this hollow body PRS. I, I, that's my couch guitar because it's hollow. I can sit and plunk away. And, you know, for as much as I play, you'd think I'd be better. <laughs> Uh, we all have that disease, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it stinks. I try and I try, but I just won't. I won't be Van Halen. Dave, you're still doing those hand transplants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's it's like yeah, I don't have any time for doing anything other than what I do. Uh, there's no, there's no other, there's no nights or anything. Yeah. There's, there's no nothing. Occasionally, I go out with a friend or two, and you know, we'll go get some drinks or something. But no. <laughs> Do you want to go to a concert? No, no, I don't. No, uh, yeah. Occasionally, well, yeah. Occasionally, I make it out to the shows. Occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, I should do a lot more of that than I do. Honestly, I'm I'm that guy that I'm in bed by nine thirty, ten o'clock. Yeah, well, yeah, most of the time I am too these days. It, it seems it's gotten a little earlier over time. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm up at six. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I am a Rams, an avid Rams and Angels fan. I, I love baseball and football. I'll do a lot of, wow. a lot of that. Huge Rams fan, especially this year. Jesus. Huh. I haven't paid attention to them. I, I know my Dolphins lost this weekend. Yeah, one is uh, three and one, right? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, well, I'm surprised. I mean, I'm surprised that they uh, they're doing as well. But New England had their number, so. But yeah, yeah, football's back. Thank God, Dave. You don't watch football, do you? I don't watch football. No, uh, occasionally I'll watch football if um, someone goes, "Hey, let's go to the Super Bowl party at this place." <laughs> and then I'm like, "Going, well, could you tell me who's playing?" <laughs> and then, 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 I'll, then I'll, wa I'll watch the game. Then, uh, no, I'm not a, I'm not a football. I was, you know what? Even growing up, I was never a. Uh, I never liked to watch sports much. I liked to go to a real sports game, mm -hmm. but I never liked to watch it much on TV. So, and then my and my my stuff growing up was baseball and hockey. Mm. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I played both, so I, I, mostly, uh, mostly hockey. Mostly hockey, though. Yeah, I, I played hockey um, for about seven years. You know, Southern California hockey was not very popular. Yeah, right. Like I grew up here, and uh, just I was you know driving home from work one day, and I saw you know beginner hockey league lessons, and I went and I, I got hooked, and I started playing for six, I mean six, seven years, something like that. Mm -hmm. I had a blast. Oh yeah, but, it's fun. It's way more fun to play than it is to watch. I mean, it is really fun to play. In fact, yeah. once you start playing it, you then appreciate watching it. Yeah, mm. it's so it's so fast paced, and you're on the ice, and you're going at a lightning speed, and you know it's it's a it's a whole different thing. I mean, faster than you can run. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not you know? fast paced. It's not fast paced when I'm playing. No, it's very slow. -paced. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up with that. So, we got a comment from Nick Mars. He says, "My Bad Cat Hot Thirty with four by twelve hangs in there with any one hundred watt amp in a live situation." That's Great. the guy. That's the guy I sold the four twelve to right there. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> you found him. There he is. That's yep. funny. Uh, Black Vulture played my first Freeman Super Strat this weekend at Motor City. Must maybe the Cali. Uh, holy shit, the neck was great. I, I I've heard great. great things about those guitars. I I'm gonna play one. I'm gonna come by and see you at Nam. I want to see those guitars. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to have a crap ton of them. Yeah, I want to try those. There'll be a ton and all the different models and styles and, you know, whatever. Float your yeah. boat. But, uh, yeah, we'll have tons of them. Yeah, I'm a, I am That's a guitar junkie. A new guitar, too. What's that, Dave? There'll be a new guitar there also. Nice. Oh, I know what it is. I don't know if you do. I do. Maybe. I think I do. <laughs> I think I know what it is. Why don't you but. tell me and I'll ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't say anything, but weren't you thinking about having that last year, but it didn't work out? Nope, nope. That's not the one. Oh, then I don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah, you don't know what it is. Hmm. All right. There you go. I'll um, tell you later. Okay. More guitars has said heard Alice in Chains in concert on Quello and Cantrell's Freedom backline sounded monstrous. I can I can attest to that. Um, yeah. his his sound is awesome. That that um, that audio that you sent me or that Tom sent me. Yeah. It's killer. <laughs> yeah, I mean that just Jerry's guitar is so like right in your face. Mm -hmm. um, M. Rabble has a question for Dave. Has EVH ever played through a BE100 or any of your amps, Dave? And if not, why? Uh, yeah, yes, early on, early on. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not pursuing that. That's he's got his own, uh, mm -hmm. he's got his own amplifier company, so. I'm not, uh, you know, just let them let them do what they want to do. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Vinny has a funny comment. He said, "Build them a Fortnite guitar and Fortnite amp, and they won't put them down." <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Vinny. I understand this comment right now. <laughs> yes, totally. My son also. My son will not put down his switch. Oh, I, I showed up. I showed up to a New Year's Eve party one year where they had. The, uh, what's that game we did? The guitar. I oh, guitar, it was guitar hero. Or? Yeah, guitar hero. And I walked in. And they're like, "Oh, there's the yeah." Let him give him the guitar. You, know, you got so and so on the drums, and I I failed miserably at that game. I could, that was nothing like yeah. That was nothing like playing guitar. No, no, no. <laughs> no the, the the more than the feeling guitar solo was coming up, and I go, I, I actually know how to play that, but I can't do it on this. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, that game died us a uh, pretty fast death, though. Mm -hmm. it yeah, it rock... was amazingly popular for a long time. But yeah, Rock Band and Guitar Hero, right? But now they even have uh, newer ones where actually it's almost like playing a guitar. That's like the strings are there. Or yeah, like, like yeah. That. yeah, yeah. I saw that, which was good could, at least. I could do that one, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Uh, but yeah, Vinny, I agree with you. Uh, Market it towards Fortnite, and the kids will eat it up. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, but Vinny, now now Fortnite. Well, Mark, you then can relate to this also. Every other day, Dad, Dad, can you just get me this? Oh yes. Can you get me this? And every freaking day, it's like, can you get me this? And it's twenty five dollars every time. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like going, no, I can't. I just got you one yesterday. No, and I know it's like, it's endless, and it's and endless. it's like, and they'll just keep on you and keep on you and keep on you to you, just like, oh my god, just be quiet here. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I've been I've been there too. I'm like, you just got a game, and now you want another one. Well, it's. It's the you know or I he wants it's the skin add. for the thing the right character. it's the add on it's this, yeah it's only exactly. this one time <laughs> it's only for a little while and I'm like going oh my god I was like this with guitar stuff huh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> just one more amp mom I promise that's okay this will be the last one <laughs> yeah. well there was, there was a game that was on my my daughter's phone that, where she was like she was building this little farm and then she could take shortcuts. But she had to pay real money to get these pieces for this stupid yeah. game on her phone. I'm like, who cares? I'm not gonna pay five bucks for that. Yeah, but I'm like looking at these these skins on Fortnite and stuff, and 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 it's like they're twenty five dollars. You got to buy the V bucks to get the the things, and it's twenty five dollars every time. 
Well, somebody it's is a lot twenty-five dollars. Yeah. They're making bank. <laughs> somebody is a, a lot smarter than we are. They That's are making bank. I mean, they're probably bilking me out of hundreds, hundreds of dollars a month. Oh, that's uh, crazy. And, and then there's, you know, you know, there's a uh, there's a thing called Twitch, not the Switch, but Twitch, which is a service where people pay to watch other people playing video games, or they'll make donations to people's channel to watch their video games. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So my son, we had opened, when my son turned thirteen, we opened up a you know, a small bank account he had 200 bucks for his birthday. Yeah. Right. Had. had exactly. So we gave him a, he had a, a little debit card and, uh, you know, at first we monitored it pretty closely. And the next thing we know, we weren't monitoring it at all. And, uh, he was down to like $5 and we were trying to figure mm -hmm. out, it was like $5 transaction, $2, $5, $5, you know, all these little transactions. Yeah. Finally yeah. found out what he was doing was donating, to all these different channels that he liked watching their videos. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, did anybody? Well, sure, sure. I mean, that's you know, could be similar to a, a patron, you know, patron account or yeah, exactly. Or or, um, or there's another thing I got to talk to you about too. Um, uh, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, and I said, "Why would you do that?" And he said, "Well, I like their content." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, yeah, there you go, right?" I can't, I can't, I can't, can't argue with that. Yeah, uh, I said, "Well, when you get a job, you can start donating money to people." Um, oh, we have a great question here from Bark Eater. Bark Eater. Bark Eater. Hmm. Uh, what speakers are are in are your favorite in your Bad Cat amps? Uh, every one of our bad cap bad cat amps has the uh, the bad cat speaker, which is a it's a modified V thirty that we have made for us in the uh, the UK factory, and it's just a, it's a, it's it's a, a little less mid rangey, a little more open sounding. The top end's a little airier, the, the bottom's a little tighter. Just it feels a little more broken in, though it does break in nice. But it's essentially a modified V thirty. Oh, okay. That's cool. And Dave, I think the question for you, what's your favorite speaker for the BE 50? Deluxe? Oh man. I like a lot of Celestians. Um, greenbacks, you know, uh, the, the standard straight up greenback, uh, the vintage 30, the creambacks, the H's and the M's. Um, I mean, those are kind of our go-to speakers, depending depending on what kind of cabinet, what kind of sound you're looking for. Um, kind of classic, tried and true choices, you know. Okay. Um, thrash metal and fun riffs asks best looper. Looper, as in switcher or looping. Yeah, I don't. That know. that would be that would be the question for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pedal. Um, you talk a pedal board or um, yeah, pedal board uh, loop switcher or a pedal board a looper like as in you're you know making a guitar loop and playing over top. Yeah, not sure. Um, okay, Tom Foglietta, he wants to know what's up with Soldano amplification. Um, I just saw a video where he mentioned he was retiring, so that's all I know. That's all I know, too. Um, that was a cool video, though. You see that, Dave? No, I didn't. Oh, you know the one I'm talking about, though? Nope. Oh, I shared it on – I think I shared it on our page or on my personal page. Uh, it, was some, it, was a, yeah, it was some local Seattle – Oh uh, no no! I did I did see that, but I, I didn't watch it all the way through. I started to watch it and then I got distracted or something. Oh, it's it's pretty. It's kind of it's a little sad towards the end after you watch it. Like you know, like uh, you know, because then he talks about he's kind of like riding off into the sunset, talking about how he's going to be retiring. Um, but it was Michael, very. So Michael Sodano made a video talking about his retirement. He was on some local news program, I think. Yeah, it was some local Seattle. Thing it kind of showcased, you know, a little bit about him and his legacy of of amp making, and um, and then he just had a little blurb about 
retiring or as he goes into retirement. So how old? Is, how old is he? Sixty something. Okay. Uh -huh. Is he sixty three, Mark? Do you remember? I don't. I don't recall now. I, 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 don't quote me on that. If I quote wrong, I'm sorry. But I think he's sixty or sixty, yeah. early sixties. Well, I wish him well. He's uh, he's a legend. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, no doubt. Um. So thrash metal, if you uh, can clarify whether you mean best switcher or like a loop pedal. Um, uh, Chris wants to know, is the Chicago Music Exchange event going to be late night? Uh, not late, late night. Um, I thought off the top of my head, I think it's going to be around seven-ish, I think. Maybe eight-ish. Seven, six, seven, somewhere, somewhere in there. If I recall, I'm not looking at the the sheet right now, so that'll okay. be a good one. Um, so okay, uh, I have a question for John from Vinny. Um, thanks for doing this. I own a Fender Twin and a Friedman Friedman BE100 that was modified by Dave to BE50 specs. Specs. Which bad cat amp would fit within these two? uh well the hot cat 30 is going to give you a little bit of both i mean you're going to get the high gain on one side and the the clean you know sort of sparkling on the other i would imagine i mean i've never heard the b100 i, I don't know I'm, I'm gathering it's a probably just a great sounding you know high gain marshall kind uh, of sound yeah exactly mm -hmm. um anthony zeri whatever happened to the guy hendrick guytron amps I'm not sure well, Guytron um, is owned by someone else now, so Guy Hendricks not involved in Guytron anymore. I can't Guy, remember his name off the top of my head. Guy had a uh, Guy had a, a car. It was in a car accident about what six months ago. Oh, was he? Yeah, and he had uh, he he's he's physically unable to work right now. He his cognitive ability is is sort of compromised at this point. Oh, it's wow. kind of sad. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I just talked to him on the phone probably a month ago. Hmm. I had no idea. That's too yeah. bad. The guy's a good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude. Uh, sorry to hear that. Um, Matt Harrison, question for the builders. If you're designing a circuit that's inspired by another, how much different do you have to make it to avoid trouble? Not there, at all. There, there, there is no trouble. There, there, just no one – I mean, you could blatantly copy something and there's no trouble. Um, nothing is, uh, generally patented. patented. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, I don't want to blatantly copy exactly something that's horrible. I, I you know, it's, you, you have to make, at least make your, your own tweaks and your own changes, you know? Well, there, there's yeah. a, when you start building something like that, you're, you're doing it generally because there's a dissatisfaction in some part of it. Yeah, exactly. You know? So how do you make it sound like you want it to sound? Yeah. It starts with this, but then it goes to there. Right. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting question because, um, you know, we, we've had Wampler on and we've also had on um, Analog Man, right? And, uh, and Wampler just came out with the Pantheon pedal, which is basically a king of tone pedal. Right. Yes. And he even says it basically just with some added couple of added things here and there. And that, I think that was one of like the first besides the Tumnus, which is kind of like a clone. But uh, yeah, the uh, the marketing of some of that maybe might have been slightly questionable. But uh, um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, there's 10,000 tube screamers. There's, you know, right. probably more. There's more than 10,000 tube screamers. There's the. Uh, you know, there's there's uh, a ton of other pedals. You know, so I uh, everyone. You know, there's nothing. New, there's only so much you can do with pedals, too. So, so like, like yeah. I'll, someone I'll be would look at it. Someone would look at it and go, "Oh, the similarities is uh, it's similar to this." Well, yeah, it's similar to this. So is this, and so is this. So, uh, I felt bad for Mike. Um, you know, Analog Man. 
I kind of felt yeah. bad for him because I was like, you know, he's got this really coveted pedal, but unfortunately it takes two years to get one. Yeah. So uh, well, that's his I, own. That's his own choosing. I mean, I, that's the that's the thing. It's his own choosing. So I, in a, from a business perspective, I don't blame any manufacturer to step in and say, "Hey, this is a huge untapped market. People are waiting two years to get this pedal. If I can make something that sounds just as good." So I don't know. It was kind of. I, I just felt bad for him when I saw it. I was like, "Oh, that's 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 got to hurt." Um, just my opinion. You don't have to comment on it. So, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to some other questions here. Um, is a broken speaker less reliable? Broken yes. speaker. <laughs> a broken speaker is much less reliable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but a broken good. in speaker? No. 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 Not at all. Okay. Um, just sounds better. Have you ever tried using a fuzz and distortion pedals together, Sonia? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, um, are you familiar with the band, the Jayhawks? Gary Loris? Um, mm -hmm. These guys are my favorite band. And Gary Loris used to get this fuzz tone uh, on the early records. And I ran into him one time and he showed me how he did it. And what he did was kind of clever. He had a, a Shin Yi fuzz right and you know the shiny shiny fuzzes sound like they sound like a swarm of bees they're just kind of nasty and thin but what he does is he played the shiny fuzz into a full drive two and he used the full drive two to kind of shape the sound and so it had this kind of thick throaty mm -hmm. almost bacon popping in a pan kind of sound to it and uh, yeah, so that was a fuzz box going into a distortion box, and they used the distortion box to shape it. And if you turn reverse them, it, it wouldn't work. It doesn't work. So yes was the answer. Gotcha. Okay. Um, from Bev uh, BV Ninja says uh, Mark lots of guitar stores for John to go to when he visits Tokyo at. Oshimizu Gakendaki. I know I butchered that really bad. That's cool. When you go over to Tokyo. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't yeah, wait. There's a lot, lot of cool stores there. Yeah. Whole street full. I am just going to be a passive passenger in the car. They're going to take me around. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, we got Mar Morgan Colgrave from Australia. How's it going? Good eye. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, I always love that, that we can reach people all over the world. It's so cool. Bark Eater is from Florida. Um, so am I. That's cool. Uh, I'm trying to look for other questions. Um, if I got a personal letter from Dave or John, I'd shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I guess I use one more of these. <laughs> if I actually sat down to do it, you couldn't read it. So <laughs> that's the, that's my problem. How about a typed letter? Yeah. Type, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. How about a computer written letter? Yeah. Signed. I can sign. I can still sign because we don't have to read it. I, I guess um, it has been a long. I don't write much. You know. I don't. Actually, physically, right? Yeah. So much. when you go, when you do go to write something, it's kind of weird. Like you're like kind of. I I find myself mixing up like cursive with with, I, with regular, and it just kind of looks like just like a two year old wrote it. I so, do that. Yeah, I got a cursive L, and then there's a, a block E, and it's it's a yeah mess. yeah it's a it's a disaster. So mm -hmm. it's funny how you you've you've just forgotten. You, well, you even, just never do it. I mean, I, I'll scribble notes on a, a a pad of paper a lot, but you know, but they're I can read them, right? Sometimes, uh, <laughs> I'll draw uh, schematics on a piece of paper. Mm. Um, but yeah, no. If my wife is watching, this is an apple. I'm gonna eat this. <laughs> uh, that's too funny uh deja blue what's your favorite modern greenback speaker what works best with the bad cats 
I don't know. I mean, I we just use the bad cat speakers. We voice our amps with those speakers. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I've I've had a few, you know, Rick Rick's dropped off a few different samples of different speakers for us to try and I've just I don't know, my ears have kind of gotten adjusted to the bad cat speakers and I just like the sound of the of the the Vintage 30 modified speaker that we use we use now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know. Um, Jim Becker, what's going on, Jim? What do you like for phase inverter tubes and why? Lots of talk around the Sovtech, Sovtech LPS and matched phase inverters. Well, first, I like AX7s in the phase because I like a little more aggressive uh, rather than the ATs or the AYs. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I usually just get what is... Um, you know, the JJ Tesla stuff is nice, right? You know, and um, sometimes the Chinese AX7s are, are, are nice. They're, they're real gainy. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't have a personal preference. What about you, Dave? I mean, a lot, uh, you know, in the phase inverter, I mean, yes, it can it can change a lot of things. Um, the, the, the long plate tube um, can change a lot. So that that is an LPS. Um, I don't know if I love that. I mean, that's a pretty decent phase inverter tube. Um, what I used to like is an old EI uh, right. long plate tube for the phase inverter. That that's a very that'll make it sound quite a bit different. Um, it'll it'll smooth it out a lot, and it just sounds full. really good. Full, uh, full, but yet smooth. It, it's mm -hmm. um, that was a great tube. Too bad they can never keep them non microphonic, but they sounded really good. Um, I mean, generally we use Chinese for two two of our slots, and then JJ's for the first two slots for microphonics. Not that JJ's are my favorite; it's just that in production, in the kind of quantity we do, it has to be. It just I can't sit there and find the quiet Chinese tube or find the quiet uh, whatever Tung Sol tube, or it's no, it can't happen. You no. can do it after the fact. You can have fun later if you want, um, but. Uh, but yeah, no, I, get, I, get, I get a lot of that as well. You know, why, why don't you use NOS? Like, what? Can you get me twenty thousand? Yeah, no. exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, I it, wish it, you have to use what works, what's reliable, and what's good. And to be but, honest, if I could get rid of the JJs, I would love to because uh, the JJ preamp tubes just up and quit sometimes. Hmm. They just just don't work. They work fine, and then all of a sudden, bloop, nothing. Hmm. Uh, so if I could get rid of those, I'd be really happy. But unfortunately, I can't find anything that'll work. Mm. In enough, enough of them, where I'm not sitting there hunting and pecking through tubes. And then if you don't use those tubes in anything, you have all these tubes sitting here going, "Well, what am I going to do with those? <laughs> yeah. I don't use them anywhere else." Mm. So, gotcha. Um, question for John from Tessie Switch: um, Is there anything interesting or new on the horizon for Bad Cat? No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the the hot yeah, a couple things actually. Um, the stereo unleash is in the works. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and the uh, the Hot Cat Thirty Player Series will be out in January. And I have something that we designed in 2015 called the PAW that um, I've had and I've not released it, but now everybody else has. So I've kind of missed the boat. But let me see, I got it here. Little 100 watt Class D tube. Pedal board amp? Well, I never thought it would go on a pedal board. It was just, um, it was essentially just a small, you know, two preamp that we built with the Class D output. Um, it sounded great. We had it ready to go twenty in twenty fifteen. Um, in January twenty sixteen, I showed it to about nine dealers at the NAM show, and everybody just sort of seemed nonplussed about it. Went, ah. So we sort of shelved it, right, and then and forgot about it until six months ago. He said, oh, yeah, that, that thing was done. Huh? We got the Gerber files. We're ready to go. So, hmm. yeah, we, I, you know, I'll build a few. We'll, we'll try it out. If, if I like it, we'll release it. If we don't like it. You know, the one thing, i tell you what, 
the, the, one of the lessons I learned, and Dave probably knows this as well, is never put out something that you don't love yourself. Yeah. I was talked into a, uh, an amplifier, uh, and I won't even say what it was, but about four years ago. And Francis Sheeney was one of the guys that talked me into it, by the way. <laughs> and I said, I, I go, I, I hate this. I don't like it at all. He's like, oh, it's, it's great. It's great. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not great. Well, right. we built we built fifty of them and they flopped miserably, you know. <laughs> and that was and I'm still taking them back. You know, I still get guys that say, "Hey, I got one of the, you know, got one of these and um, you know, can I trade it in for something else?" <laughs> like Francis Sheeney, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um. This is an interesting question. I, I can probably answer it, but I know Dave is the expert. Um, Dave, I play a lot of metal and rock. Uh, between the Run 20 and the PT20, what would you recommend? How metal? That, that would be the question. Uh, uh, the PT20 will be brighter, or not the PT, I'm sorry, the Run 20 will be brighter and more cutting and tighter. And the PT will be a little darker, rounder, and squishier. Oh, about the same game. Same basic channel. Would you say the PT has like more of a like a growl to it, more of a vo vocal thing going on? Uh, uh, it just really, honestly, it's just uh, uh, the power amp is different in the PT and the and the. Um, and it's just the, on the darker side. It's a smoother. It's kind of smoother and darker, and a little squishier feeling under the fingers on the PT. Gotcha. Cheddar Kung Pao in the chat. What's going on? Uh, good evening, everybody. I love my new Friedman Vintage S. Well, that's great. Yeah. What is that? What is it? What is the Vintage S? Vintage S is a, a basically the you know the Strat style pick guard, oh, oh, two so singles, a humbucker, uh, Goto five ten bridge, um, locking tuners. Okay, hot rodded Strat, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Dejo Blue Friedman amp closest to an SLO one hundred, if any. None of them. That it's, it's totally different. Uh, well, I'm not going to say totally different circuit, but it's 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 a entirely different preamp circuit, and and uh, yeah, and the power amp really, it's all different. So nothing. Okay. Um, are there any bad cat amps that utilize negative feedback, or are they all in the Vox zone? Dave Maggot asks. No, there are uh, no, there are not. All it's all part of the Vox family. Gotcha. Um, Big Poppy says, Tone Talk rules. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, M. Rabble, we've, we've answered that question about EVH playing one of Dave's amps. Uh, he did it a while back. Uh, I, I have a question for Dave. So if I wanted to sound like Mick Jones, what Friedman amp should I get? I want that 70s, you know, crunch, 401 and 402. Yeah, the, probably the Dirty Shirley, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. Dirty okay. Shirley amp, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would that would do it. That would do it. The other, the other guitar player that plays... Um, in place of Mick Jones, a lot of the time, Bruce Watson is a client of mine. He uses BU100s live with okay. that. Um, he just has them dialed back to get a really crunchy, good Marshall tone okay. out of them. Uh, so, but yeah, I think that the Dirty Shirley, I mean, well, you heard the one. Yeah, no, that's, I, yeah. I thought yeah. that was great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably it. Yeah, the Dirty Shirley is great. I got it on my Synergy. So, Dave, I run the Synergy, the Dirty Shirley, through the BE100. Yep. It's definitely, I mean, the voice for the preamp. It's pretty much there, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's pretty close, right? 
It's a, it's a slight, uh, yeah, really close. It's just a slightly stiffer power amp uh, than than the the you know the forty watt is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's really kind of fifty watts, but yeah, we call it the forty watt. Gotcha. <clears throat> so it's just the power section that's making it sound a little bit different. Yeah, exactly. But gotcha. uh, you know, just a little stiffer power amp, a little bigger, you know, hundred watt power section is a little more, mm-hmm. a little more. A little more uh, sack, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's an, an amp term. Yeah, more, more sack. More sack. Uh, three score ten. It says William Duval's rig also sounded great with the DVL one Metro amps. Yep. But yeah, I've I've heard them in Metropolis. Uh, he's using those amps. Yep. He's got his own little model with George. So it's called the DVL one. That's yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. So Deja Blue says, yes, set up a Patreon account. You know, I kind of held off from doing it. I was like, I don't want to ask people for donations and stuff. But I don't know. I felt weird doing it. What do you think, Dave? Well, now there's something else on uh, on on YouTube that we can do. Oh. We can talk about. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Oh, someone wrote, Chris wrote, YouTube has a paid subscription thing now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, it doesn't hey, work exactly like that, but it's – Pete Thorne was telling me about it. Interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. Chris wants to know, Dave, where is that Friedman speaker at? Uh, it's coming. I'm doing my last listening tests this week. Well, actually, if I can clean up my shop enough to actually do the test. So, I think we're there. Okay. Uh, I don't want to release. I don't want to release something that I'm not in, I'm absolutely 100 percent in love with, as John just said. That <laughs> is good so, advice. So, and and the longer you live with something, often the more you start to pick it apart. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that's where we're at right now. So. I just got to double check something. Mm-hmm. So, um, I saw another question here, Mark, uh, from where'd it go now? There you go. Oh, uh, Dojo Blue. Dojo Blue? However you say it. Uh, mm-hmm. Said yeah, he saw me on Tim Pierce's channel last week. Uh, great to look at your shop. If security isn't a concern, would uh, great to see a Friedman shop tour. Actually, uh, Henning Pauly did a Friedman factory mm-hmm. tour, um, and it would be on his channel. You can find it on uh, on YouTube. If so that's he, what you're talking about. Was he within t- Tone Merchants in that area as no, well? No, no, no. Henning was at the factory, so the factory tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's not much to tour here. I mean, there's some, but not too much to tour. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Brent Harmon said, need to bring back Mike Soldano. Um, I doubt Mike will come back on. Um, we spent like almost four hours with him and pretty much talked everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We did. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what else. I mean, I'd love to have Mike come back on. He's welcome anytime, but um, I, I wonder what he would want to talk about. Um Let's see. Just picked up a Bad Cat two-tone. Got any secrets to getting the most from the pedal? From Big Poppy. Uh, well, it's very sensitive to tube choices. I mean, you can swap tubes around in it, and it will definitely reward you when you find the right combination. But uh, w- what pedal board are you putting that thing on? I mean, that thing is the size of a, a frisbee, <laughs> and you and you plug it into the wall. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, let us know, Big Poppy. Um, Chris says, I played that Pantheon pedal, and it sounds nothing like a King of Tone. Okay. Well, there you go, then. Yeah. So. Um, is there really anything that can be patented? Isn't this all just variations on the RCA tube manual? Like what uh, Like what the hell is Meza patenting anyway, LOL? Um, um, our our K-Master circuit's patented. I got a patent on that, um, granted, last year. 
Um, I mean, as far as just the topography, not much, right? I mean, there's a bunch of yeah, not much. I mean, the Mesa yeah. has a bunch of patents on a whole bunch of things, um, um, which some are enforced and some aren't. Uh, Hartley PV had a bunch of patents on a bunch of stuff too. Yeah, mm. some stuff not enforced. You know, was the resonance thing patented? Yeah, originally, from what I understand, Hartley had the uh, resonance uh, resonance knob patented, but then uh, and, but then Stevie Fryat just told him to go f himself because I was doing it before you ever patented it. <laughs> so uh, at least I recall that. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe that's not how it went, but I do recall that conversation with Stevie. <laughs> but uh, uh, maybe that didn't go down exactly that way, so don't quote me. Hmm. Um, it's Be my get in trouble disclaimer. <laughs> exactly, cover my ass. <laughs> yeah. So I could be full of shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Timothy Pierce, not the Tim Pierce, but Timothy Pierce. Uh, do you have a volume pedal to match your new wah? No, but that might be possible. The only problem is if I really wanted to do a volume pedal, I kind of don't want to do it in the same chassis as the wah because um, I don't really care for volume pedals in sort of wah chassis. Um but then again, it might work out fine, and that would be surely easier to do. Um, but if I were to do it, I'd rather, I, I definitely have some definitive ideas on what I'd want to do. Uh, but I, I'd want to uh, design a whole new casing for it. And I don't know if there's that much call for it. Maybe there is, but you know, there's good volume pedals out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Danny. mean, most vo most volume pedals can be uh, any issues with volume pedals can be corrected with a buffer in front of them, right? And and so so if you put a buffer in front of a low impedance volume pedal, that is going to be your best volume pedal. So my favorite volume pedal on the market is the 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 Boss volume pedal. The now the oh god, it used to be the FV five hundred L, but now it's the um, maybe it's still called that now. Um, they keep changing it over the years, uh, just with a buffer in front. So like that, I mean, that it's smooth, it's big, it feels good. It, it, the taper of it's great. And, hmm. That's so cool. That's, that would... Okay. Danny Weiss question for the panel. If you're experiencing a loud hum in your rig, how do you go about troubleshooting? Using e e email me what you got, and then I can give you an idea where your hum might be. Because, uh, well, I mean, that's just so like wide open there. I have yeah, no idea what's. It could be a I have no idea what's in your rig, so I don't. I, it could be ten thousand different things. So, how, how long is a piece of string? You know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you want some advice, you can email me at uh, FriedmanAmps at Gmail. And uh, you just have to tell me what you got. Mm -hmm. Three score 10, I would say go back to watch the um, Soldano episode. We talk about the differences between the Soldano and the Rectifier. Um, pretty yes, extensive. Go, go watch me get back into trouble. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to repeat that here <laughs> again. So... Um, but yeah, go watch there. We talk about it pretty extensively on what, what the differences or similarities are. Um, let's see. Uh, I know people are like, oh, the, it's a modified blues breaker, the Pantheon and the King of Tone. So it's not a straight up clone. Um, yeah, it was just because it marketed it as like a King of Tone pedal. That kind of bothered me. That's all. Um Let's see. I'm trying to just look for questions here. Um, let's see. Okay. 
Tone Talk, my original question about broken in speakers for David John was, can you imitate their characteristics in the manufacturing process? Oh, okay. That, that is partially what's modified about our speaker. Hmm. Um, we modify the, the doping on the outer edge, which is typically what softens up and loosens and allows the cone to move more as the speaker gets older. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the answer is yeah. It's typically just softening it and loosening it up. That's but cool. I mean, it doesn't take long to break in a speaker. I mean, you, you play it like me. Crank it up. Yeah, just crank it up, play it for a while, and it'll, it'll break in. Be fine. Um, Brent Harmon, how did John come up with the Black Cat Unleash V2 attenuator and reamplifier? Um, well, it, like I said, I started with um, wiring a 5 watt mini cat into a 3000 watt QSC class D and then it just sort of morphed from there. Um, the V2 was just adding features to the V1, which was, um, you know, variable impedance on the input, uh, silent record, a direct out, um, speaker, you know, simulated output. Um, I guess the effects loop is already there, but uh, yeah, we, we, we fixed a few performance issues. Um, some of the problems with the early class D models were that when you grounded the output, you know, it just, just fried the class D, which I think was what the problem with crate had with that old, um, what was that thing that they made back in the day? There was a, a little mini class D amphitheater. Oh built. yeah. The little, uh, little block or whatever the power. Yeah. Block. The block. Yeah. Those were cool. They're kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, 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 you know, Put some protection circuits in there so that if it grounded it just basically shut off it didn't blow up and um yeah i mean that, that was it it was originally intended to be a, a reamplifier. the idea never occurred to us that anybody would want to plug a you know 100 watt amp into one right okay. <laughs> um brent harman i'm glad to find out you can get a dirty shirley 100 watt version I didn't you know that. can as a custom order, hmm. custom shop amp. I did it's not a, know that. That's cool. It's a, it's a fifty watt, right? Out of the. Uh, the it really is one. a fifty watt. Correct. It it really is. Yeah. Uh, uh, we called it a forty. Well, depending on the the tubes that are in it, too, kind of will change the output level. And by the way, it sounds great with the Bad Cat speaker. I'm sure of that. I bet it does. Yeah. yeah. You take the doping off of Vintage 30 and it sounds really good. Exactly. Yeah. Well, not, not all the doping. Right. <laughs> Just what's visible. Uh, Anthony Ziri, how's the Synergy line doing? Well, I'm not really – I mean, how's it doing? I, I guess pretty good. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm not. It's, I don't own Synergy, so that's not a really. I can't really comment. Gotcha. Um, I mean, our modules have sold pretty well. So, uh, JMP twenty two oh four rocker. Too bad Dave doesn't make a forty watt, really fifty watt is per day. Phil X amp without could without the X on the far right and regular knobs, not chicken head and normal volume numbering. I'd buy it. Could. There's one. There's one. <laughs> I'd like to see um, some of the signature models in Synergy units. That would be yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, we could do something like that maybe down the line. Like a Steve it, it, It's just a whole thing that has to be worked out then with the artists. So. Yeah, exactly. I'd imagine. Um, Thrash metal and fun riffs. Who here likes Dolly Parton? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer and say I <laughs> I, do. I do. I like Dolly Parton. Yeah. Um, my mom listened to her a lot when we were kids. When I was a kid, so. Uh, and nine to five, classic movie, man. Uh, uh, Jolene, that's a great. Jolene, song. yeah. By the way, speaking of Jolene. Have you seen the there, there's a video where someone took the song Jolene by Dolly Parton and they slowed it down by yeah, an app and it 
Did you yeah. hear that? And it sounded like a guy singing it. Yeah, like, it was a, it was a, a thirty three oh a forty five that they ran at thirty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds awesome. It did. It's great. Yeah, it Dave, great. you should check. I'll send you the link to it. I was like, because you know it's very up tempo and her voice is very, you know, hot. You know, very high up. And uh, when you slow it down, it's it sounds like a guy singing the song really slow. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's very it's very interesting. If you play it uh, backwards, is there anything that happens? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, thanks for that question out of nowhere, Dolly Parton. Um, <laughs> uh, Pete, Pete Thorne, thank you for calling us nerds. <laughs> you guys are nerds. Yes. We <laughs> that is true. That is true. I accept it. Um, <laughs> Look who's talking. Yeah. Do you have an album? <laughs> Guitar nerd, yeah. Guitar nerd. Um, Alan Kodak. Hey, guys. Thought on upgrading a Vox 212 cabinet. Go with vintage 30s or creamback 65s. Well, I mean, what's in it now? Do you have Vox Blues in it now? If it's or, blues, I'd probably leave it. I would leave it if it's blues, personally. Yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. It depends on the sound you're going with. You know, it could be could be good with vintage thirties or modified vintage thirties, <laughs> and uh, or you know, creamback sixty fives can be cool. Uh, creamback H's could be cool. Um, greenbacks could be cool. Uh, they all do something different. Stick with the blues. Blues are great. Yeah, blues are fantastic. If you got those in them, why, why not stick with them? Yeah, I agree with that. Unless you're trying to do something else with the cab. Um, Deja Blue, you should get Hartley PV on Tone Talk. That would be interesting. I, I have no problem trying to reach out to him. I, I don't – yeah, did you – you saw the, uh, the undercover – CEO show that I did. Everybody, everybody, that was the most painful half an hour of TV I've ever seen. I got done watching it. I, I you didn't know, see that. I watched it, and oh, you should watch it, Dave. It is painful because <laughs> it really is painful. I mean, because you watch it, and you're—I don't want to ruin it for you, but um, you you feel kind of uplifted at some point for the company. You're like, oh, this is really nice, and. They're doing like all these really nice things, and then it just ends so badly. <laughs> yeah, and it was just it, like it's oh. it was it was the worst I mean, that you couldn't you know draw up worse PR. Yeah, like, it <laughs> was horrible, horrible. They they have to have been so pissed at that show for doing what they did. Yeah, you know you'll you'll see it, Dave. I mean, for the people who have seen it, I mean, basically they. You know the way that have you seen Undercover Boss before any of those shows? Dave? Yeah, yes, I've seen some of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so you know at the end they kind of give like employees, you know, like the some of the employees that they showcase, they give them like you know special things. They may give them a promotion, they may give them money, they may give them this, right? Um, like one person was planning on leaving to go to another job, and they told the person, "No, stay here. You know, we'll give you." You know X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. you know, and then they, you know they offered like some scholarship to some other person, and then like anyway. Long story short, at the very end, they're like, "Oh, and regardless of all the things that we promise, we're still closing the plant and, and moving uh, it all, to, moving it all to China." Yeah, moving it all to China, and uh, and the person who was supposed to take that job now is screwed it's <laughs> because not, right. it's not there anymore. Right? Yeah, the whole thing was just like, oh my god. I felt really yeah. bad. It was a it was uh, a train train wreck. It was horrible. Yeah, it was really bad. Definitely not not the kind of thing that PV needed. That's for yeah, sure. I, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't bring that up if if Hartley's on. <laughs> there's I think there's a lot of things I wouldn't want to bring up when if Hartley were. On. Yeah, don't, but, uh, don't bring up, don't don't bring up this. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I'd love to have Hartley on. I'd love to have Randall Smith on. 
you know, everybody's welcome. Right, right. Um, so it's just a matter if they're if they're comfortable about talking some about some stuff. Um, John Hall would be a good choice. John Hall, uh, Hall uh, from Rickenbacker. Oh. oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that would be. Um, there, I mean, you you could they're they're a mile from here. Yeah, down the street. Hmm. Really? Yeah. I'll write that down. Did not realize that. You know, I've always wanted a Rick. That's one, another one of those guitars that just. Well, they, they sort of achieved, you know, which is the hardest thing to do, right? Is to be your own thing, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. They kind of created that. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Beatles helped them quite off, you know, quite as well. But. Yeah. Same with Vox. You know, I mean, sort of off topic a little bit, but there was a, um, you know, the, 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 the perennial, you know, Rolling Stone, 100 greatest guitar players of all time kind of discussion that you get involved in. Mm -hmm. To me, I've always thought that, you know, the hardest thing to do on a guitar is to be able to play it and without somebody seeing it's you, you know, have somebody immediately recognize it's you. You know, and you can so to give an example, it'd be like like say the edge and you too. You know, he's not a great tactician, but as soon as he plays, you're like, no, it's him. That's yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's there's maybe, I mean, realistically, a dozen guys like that. You know, and that's about it. You know, maybe twelve or fourteen of them. You know, at the most. Yeah. You know, and that that is so to me. That's the hard part. People that the people that have made their their. Made made a sound, made a tone, made a made a made a uh, Brian playing, May. St playing style. Brian May, yeah, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, it's him. Nobody has to tell you. Hey, that's Brian May. Like, no shit, really. Yeah. Like, Jimi Hendrix, you know, you know Eddie Jimmy Van Halen. Hendrix, yeah. Yeah. Eddie Van Halen, you know, Eddie Van Halen. To me, I mean, in my generation anyway, which is, I'm 54. I mean, if he's not in the top five, it's ridiculous because oh yeah, no, he nobody, changed the world. Yeah, nobody played like him before he came along, and well, everybody Hen played like him. Hendrix played, changed the world in the, in the '60s, late '60s, and 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 then Eddie Van Halen in the '80s. So absolutely, you know, just like there's some pivotal, pivotal, pi uh, sorry, pivotal points in guitar playing that happened over the years, and he was one of them. Yeah. yeah, you know Tom Schultz, maybe you know when that first Boston record came out, that was pretty mind blowing, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. That, like and like you said, I mean, there's just a handful or or two handfuls of guys who you recognize. You just know that's their that's tone. Them. That that's mm -hmm. them. You yeah. know, I I kind of feel Slash is another one of those guys. Maybe Joe Perry. Although I, like, you know. To be, I mean, you know, Slash, I don't think Slash is, you know, to me, Slash, maybe, I, maybe I'm missing something, but it just sounds like he was, he just grabbed a Les Paul and plugged into a, you know, plugged into a Marshall Super Lead and cranked it. Yeah. You know, I, but, but I'm, I could be missing something, you know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a big Aerosmith guy and I, I see yeah. a lot of similarities between Slash and Joe Perry playing. Mm -hmm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm a big Slash fan, so maybe it's just just for me. I, I recognize his stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm trying to think who else. Eric Clapton can do that. You know, he's got that that where he rolls off the tone knob and kind of. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page, definitely. He has that. There's yeah. no game David on that. Gilmore. Kind of Gilmore, for sure. Yeah, definitely Gilmore. Yeah. That, that What he does with that vibrato bar is kind of uniquely his yeah. own. Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck for sure, for sure. Jeff Beck for sure. Oh. Jeff Beck is a freaking alien. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Yeah, I love his playing. But I mean, what's what's kind of strange if you think about it, you know, in all the what the 50, 60 years of rock guitar, that there's a dozen of these guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah, that is true. Um, Jim Flanagan, can you have too many buffers on your board? It depends on what they are. <laughs> yes, yes, you you could potentially. Uh, 
But well, it's how, a, big again, your, how big is your board? How big is your board? What are we talking? Yeah. What buffers are you talking about? So, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's, if there's 100 boss pedals lined up, uh, maybe, yeah. Um, but, you know, what, what are you... I would need to know more. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Deja Blue, any plans for neck through guitars? Grover was the master of them. Not currently. Um, and and maybe never. Um, I, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of them. So it, it kind of. I never liked neck through guitars, and and it's not to say that they aren't cool or, or that they don't serve a purpose or something. I just never liked the tone of them. So a weird thing. I don't know why. Okay. Um. Now I'm curious. Is the uh, is the flying V a, a neck through? Flying V. The glue on. Glue on. Well, like the one, like the one uh, Grover makes. Oh, like that? Yeah, I think it is neck through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, is he, when he says neck through, does he mean like you know one piece of wood that the neck goes from one end to the yeah. other? Yeah. Some, not just a not a glue on. He's not no. talking glue. Okay. No. Yeah, it's a one one piece like the, the gotcha. neck the neck wood and the and the center of the body. I don't think I've ever owned one. Yeah, I think I might have a long time ago. But you know what? Anymore, it's been so long since I played a Nectar, I don't even know. I, it's not to say that I, could, I couldn't love it. So never say never. How about that? You never Good. know what we might do. If That's there's call advice. for it and people, and people really would, would like to see something like that, I'm not opposed to it. Well, what typical shapes are a neck through? Like an Explorer? All the, all the Jackson stuff. Or most of the Jackson stuff were nectars. Oh. Not the Charvel stuff. That was bolt ons. Right. Okay. So, but the, the Jackson stuff was nectar. Huh. Yeah. I, I, mean, like, I didn't know that. So, like, I have a Jackson uh, Not, solo. Uh, yeah. Solos would be nectar. Huh. Because, yeah, because it is, there is no bolt on. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, Dave, here's a question from Brent. Dave, what what's your ideas behind the Motor City Drive and Fuzz Fiend um, with the tubes in them, and why were they discontinued? I didn't know they were discontinued. They're not discontinued. That's a bunch of crap. Did Guitar Center tell you that? Hmm. Uh, they're 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 not discontinued. Um, they might get phased out eventually because they weren't massive sellers, uh, but. Um, they're currently not discontinued. We have them in stock. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what? what's the thing? That, I mean, the Tube Fuzz is killer. Uh, it, that's an amazing pedal. Uh, does some really cool, um, unique features with the the the, um, the Rage switch that's on it and the momentary Rage switch, which is really cool. Um, and the Motor City Drive is kind of my take on that kind of classic sort of uh, – stoner rock queens of the stone age sort of um uh, uh, uh thick too saturated sort of tone does that really really well in fact if you look at pete thorne's video of that pedal it, he's doing that sort of music in that video and uh and you'll see it it sounds really cool for that okay yeah they also both those pedals also work incredibly well on bass by the way so Maybe maybe it should be marketing towards bass players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely want one of those fuzz fuzz fiends. I like that whole uh, button where you can get it to go crazy. Yeah, it's cool. Um, Big Pappy says, "Would love to see Josh Scott of G J H S on Tone Talk." I've already reached out to cool. him. Yeah, I've reached out to Josh, so uh, that's in the works. Metal Dad, love Brian May's tone. Me too. Always been a big fan of Brian May. Um, and now I just left, lost my place. Okay. Uh, now there's Hendrix and Van Halen. There's everyone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's an argument for that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I love Hendrix, but Van Halen just 
is just from my generation. Yeah, he's he's sort of the alpha. Yeah, I just you know, so with my jaw. I, I remember the day when I heard eruption. For, right? Eruption. The first time I heard Van Halen, I was just with my friends. We were in camp, and we were just like, "What is what, that? What is? Yeah, exactly. Play that back again." You know, just kept rewinding the tape. Um, and then even in college, I went back to a friend's house, and that was like the lost weekend, just listening to Van Halen 2 over and over and over again. I won't tell you what we were doing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, is there anything special about Ampeg VT series amps that the Rolling Stones use in 69 from Jake Johnson? I don't know. Like the the Ampeg uh, VT, um, which one is it? The... Thrash Metal says VT sixty. Yeah. They're brutal sounding. <laughs> There's a, all all those Ampeg amps, you know, sound like uh, they, uh, to me they always sound like mini versions of of SVTs. Uh, they're just very, very unforgiving and in your face and just punchy. A, a lot of the, like the doom metal, you know, like the doom, not doom rock, like, like stoner rock and stuff. Use amps like that with fuzz pedals into them and stuff. And they're just, just pummeling. But, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I don't know that specific model. I don't know enough. Of, I, I don't think I know enough about it. No, I don't either. Pete Thorne mentions Randy Rhodes is a next through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. That's what I believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thoughts on PRS amps from Johnny Ryall. I've never played through one. Me either. Me neither. So I, I, I can't comment. I, I mean, I've heard some stuff that sounds cool on, on video and stuff. Yeah. By the way, you guys, Dave, you just you guys just have that. I saw one finish that you guys just did that was so beautiful. The uh, the black with like the white grain. Yeah, yeah. We uh, it's not. Yeah, it's um, we called it something different than the the name. Um, I forgot what our final name was for that color. Yes, I know what you're talking about. That is killer. That's a, it's mm -hmm. kind of like a like a washed out. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's got like in the grains. There's white. Yeah, it's freaking yeah. killer. And other than that, it's sort of like a matte black, sort of. Yeah, with, with the, the gray, the, the white. In it. Yeah, it's really cool. I really like that. It was super. Yeah, cool. that was a great one. Uh, Pete Thorne says, "Make a black with gold hardware road style Friedman guitar." I always liked that thing. Love that thing. <laughs> I, I, you know, Grover. I'm into that. <laughs> Grover, Grover, Grover can make them. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a good question, actually. I have a Friedman buffer bay. Was thinking of getting your wah wah. It has a buffer too. Don't don't need uh, what it says, but don't have. Let's see. Don't need both. But don't I guess? But don't have. Uh, but two pedals in front of the loop. He says. Okay. Well, just in the in the wah, you can you can. Uh, well, you can do it one of two ways. You can either bypass. The buffer on the buffer bay with the switch and leave the one in the wah or you can leave the one on in the buffer bay and bypass the one in the wah there's a switch inside there you go uh a bo uh the the buffer in front of the wah might make it sound a little different than without so you should try it both ways and see what you like better okay Here's a question for John Andrew Kumar. John, what's your favorite non Bad Cat amps? What do you like to play? Oh, God. Well, I, I like the Friedman Dirty Shirley. That was a great amp. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, I'll get you your money later. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, you know, I grew up in the '70s, and so you're, you're listening to, you know, Thin Lizzy and Foreigner, and you know, so that kind of Marshall Crunch you're sort of attracted to. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember the first time I ever heard, um, you know, uh, it was a, it was at the Roxy, and I was in the back of the room, and you know, I, I was kind of a Marshall guy, and I just heard this 
big E minor chord. You know, it's crying. I'm like, holy crap, what is that? And I turned around, and it was a matchless DC-30 and a Les Paul Jr. And that sort of changed me from that point on. It was like, okay, I, I, I like hearing all the different notes of the chord and, you know, and that sort of stuff. And so I was sort of attracted more to the Vox kind of amps from that mo moment on. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I like, right? You know, I mean, the, you know, there's a lot of great vintage amps. I mean, Dave makes great stuff. And um, I've got, a, I've got a, a 1981 JMP, you know, that I've got in the closet. I, I love that amp. Um, Those are great amps. Master Volume? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got a great master volume in it, too. It sounds great when you turn it down. And, mm -hmm. You know, for me, that is, that's the thing, because 98% of my playing, you know, is in a low-volume environment. Mm -hmm. You know, only once in a while can I turn that thing up. And that's a good question I've got for Dave. It's like, I noticed that, um, you know, when you're, when you're voicing something, you know, there are, there are ways to make it sound really good with the band, and there are ways to make it sound really good in a music store. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of tweak it both ways. And I think there's a certain um, brand of amps. I won't bring them up, but they sound really good in music stores. But then when you get them with a the band, they just, you know, the, the middle's all gone. And it just sort of like once the cymbals start being hit and the, the bass starts going, and you know, the, the, you're just left with this big, big, yeah, you're just left with this big vacuous mid range. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sure. Yeah, no, it's 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 like you know every so often you have to go back to your reference too. I find because uh, you can get out of hand with you sitting there with just the guitar amp and not a band, you know. Yeah, you can get out of hand with low end. You can get out of hand with everything, and and every so often I have to remind myself what my old Plexi Marshall sounds like. So I have to. Right. I have to turn it on and then A B the new amp to that and can I right. dial can I dial in that same tone mm -hmm. with my new amp and, or or close to or close proximity of it. Mm -hmm. And if I can, then I'm okay. Because then you can get both ways. Mm -hmm. You can kind of get that. You know, if you're sitting in the room yourself and just playing, you're gonna dial in more bass and you might have a little oh, less yeah. mid range. Oh, and, yeah. and you know, just make it sound huge and you might make it a little darker sounding. Mm -hmm. uh, but then that doesn't translate to a band very well bright right, right. and cutting and with mid-range is what translates to a band right right um, the low the low end is already being handled by the guy with the four string you know? and I, I unfortunately think we've uh, a lot of amps have lost their path when that comes to that I, I it's they're not um we've lost some of that and people just don't know what like that old Marshall sounds like anymore. And mm -hmm. I have a huge background in, in, in vintage amps. And uh, I know what all the blackface amps sound like in the tweeds and, and, you know, different, different ampegs and different high Watts and, and different eras of Marshall's. And um, that's sort of created the base for everything I do. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot of people haven't had the pleasure of being able to play through all those amps in their in their lifetime. You know, maybe they haven't been around them at all. You know, there's very many people that, you know, like, hey, I played this one amp all my life and or I had these two amps and they never they, they never got a chance to hear. They're in God knows where and it's like they didn't hear a nineteen sixty eight Plexi fifty watt Marshall. Right. On ten. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, and how to, how does that sound? And I was fortunate enough to start working in this industry. When I was really young, and I was already into it before I even got there, and uh, and and you know, and that was what gave me the base, you know, to do what I do now. Right. Yeah, I mean, every conceivable at the time when I started working for Andy Brower Studio Rentals, every conceivable amp was in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, basements, every blackface amp. Every single one, <laughs> from Princeton to, you know, from Champ up through Princeton, through Vibrolux to Vibroverb to Super Reverb to Twin to you know, up the volume totem pole there, and every yeah. every high watt and every you know, vintage JTM forty five and Marshall and mods and all sorts of things. Yeah, so, and what can, what can work really well in a band context can sound really tight and unforgiving in a bedroom. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Scare people. Yeah. It's like, oh my, am I this bad? 
<laughs> yeah. That's true. That is true. Um, question from 667T not B. Can a line instrument level switch mod be done to a Freeman effects loops or add a line level power amp in? Uh, sure. Sure. Could be. What are you feeding it though? I mean, you can you can feed. You, you I mean you can feed a line level into it now. You'll just have to. It'll just come on quicker. If you're just using a power amp in, kind of, is that what you're talking? Mm. You can just plug it into the return. You'll be fine. Uh, John, have you ever used 6550 tubes in your amps? From Jim uh, No, no, just 34s, 84s, uh, 6L6s, and 6Bs. Okay. Uh, Vinicus Rosa. Hey there, did you try the universal audio aux on your amps? Have you tried that, John? Uh, I have not. I keep I, People keep calling me and telling me I need to try that. In fact, my friend Andrew has been uh, threatening to bring one over. I'm, I'm anxious to hear it. Oh, it sounds great. Yeah, I mean, because I, I love to, you know, play amps and headphones because I, you know, I like to play at home and, um, you know, if I'm on that rare occasion when I'm up past 10 o'clock, and everybody else is in bed, you know, it'd be kind of nice to plug in. Yeah. Uh, especially plug in a hundred watt plexi or, you know, right. pull, pull out that JMP. Instead of my usual kidney bean pod. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's a universal ox is a very, very cool product. I, I'd love to get my hands on one of those. Um, here's an interesting question from Deja Blue. Has the purchase of the wireless frequency spectrum by T-Mobile caused any concern in the amplifier industry? I hadn't heard anything about that. No. Why? As as far as uh, like wireless, uh, wireless units? Hmm. No, it's not, it's not really. I mean, well, it could be an issue with wireless units, yes, but... Um, not for the amplifier companies. No. Use a cord. Use a use a cable like use a man. A cord, goddamn it! <laughs> play it like, play it like a man. <laughs> Be a man. Uh, that's funny. That's from the Godfather. Uh, the dog puss says, "I want Delana interview here. We're working on that. We'll take care of that one of these days." Yeah. Um. Maybe you guys should have a little tab to put on your amps when you buy them that switches from demo voicing to band voicing. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd all my low end go? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. In, in the store, outside of the store. Outside of store. Yeah. In bedroom, out of bedroom. Right. Small club, big club. <laughs> Six way rotary switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Small bedroom, large bedroom. Right. <laughs> be be careful. Small to club, measure. large yeah. club. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. That is uh, great. Uh, I started tinkering uh, years ago with the Dan Torres book and the RCA tube manual. What other tube amp education education books or resources would you recommend? Oh, um, London Power stuff. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of fun facts in a lot of his books. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, also uh, uh, Merlin, the uh, uh, Merlin uh, Belcourt, or I, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, or I don't quite remember how to pronounce the last name. Uh, if you look up Merlin two books, you'll find it. That's that's really good info. I would not recommend the Aspen Pittman tube amp book. <laughs> Only for the schematics. Yeah, schematics <laughs> are nice. That's but this funny. day and age, you can get all the schematics online, so it doesn't matter. Right, right. Of course, then again, if you're internet connection, you know, if you lose the inter if we lose the internet one day, then we're all screwed. <laughs> right. Well, you got to have the books. Did did we begin talking about that? Yes. Got to have the books. Um. Uh, that 667 uh, T not B, he said he'd like to use a line level preamp to the Friedman amp. 
You can just do that. Plug it into the return. Turn the turn the loop return level down lower. It's there not it's, it's not a problem. Uh, Johnny Rail XL, XLR versus TRS. Uh, well, it would be the same thing. It depends on what application you're talking, but it's the same thing. A balance line, a balance line, or a balance line. It's it's TRS balanced or or XLR balanced, and that's it. So it's just the XLR is heavier duty, and it locks. Different shape plugs. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, what are your thoughts on the even tie? Or seven? Is does he say? Maybe it's evidence audio. Evidence audio SIS solderless patched cables. I don't like any solderless cables. Period. Mm -mm. It's just problems waiting to happen, people. Now, no. I guarantee that you will not make it well enough, and you will have issues. What's that buzz? Oh, it's one of the cables on my board out of the 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, I, luck I, find, good luck finding it. Um, it's, it's just, it's just, you're going to have problems. And, and generally people tell, you know, ask me, Oh, well, Hey, I have all this solder, this stuff. Can you use that on the board you're building me? And the answer is no, no, sorry. I, I can't. I, I don't even want to, I don't want to make it. And I'll probably do a better job than you'll do. But I don't want to make it because it's just iffy. No, you're asking for it. You know, either, you're asking what, for it. Or if yeah. the end loosens up over time, then you lose the ground or part of the ground, or it's intermittent, or, or you know, if you wiggle the cable, it doesn't work right. I, you know, solder, 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 solder the cables. Absolutely. I, I if you can't solder, solder, have someone solder the cables. Uh, and if you are going to attempt to solder for the first time, good luck. <laughs> Because you're gonna you're gonna botch up the cables, maybe worse than actually the solderless. So <laughs> yeah, if you really can't solder, then you probably maybe better with the solderless. But <laughs> practice soldering. But uh, if you really want to do it right, you should you should have the cable soldered for you or something, or have a board built professionally. Because uh, you know, so many people overlook even the noises they have. And my pedal board's really quiet. Oh yeah, here, come here, bring it here. You plug it into a dirty amp, and all of a sudden, uh, and uh, oh, I never heard that before. That's because you're using it into a twin, but right. uh, but your noises are there. They're they're there. Believe me. Uh, hmm. So then there's a there's a whole bunch of you know you shouldn't stack pedals on linear power supplies because they can cause hum. That's why on the Friedman power supply for the boards, it's a switching power supply. There's no field hum around it whatsoever. Um, not all powers, you know, not all power supply. A lot of power supplies are linear, especially older ones. Newer ones these days are more switching based. Um, using tor are you using Torrise in those or, or no? It's a, it's a complete uh, switch. Uh, a complete. Uh, uh, it's not a linear supply. It's a switching power supply, so it's uh, it doesn't use a transformer in it. Oh, okay. So, but it's uh, properly filtered and it's quiet and it's done right. So all individual isolated outputs. Also, never use a power supply that has uh, shared uh, power because you're just going to create ground loops between all your pedals and more noises. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dave. Question for you. On your board with the buffer bay and you know the power supply, mm -hmm. if you use a fuzz pedal mm -hmm. with the buffer, will that cause mm -hmm. problems? Uh, some fuzz pedals don't like buffers in front of it, so it depends on which fuzz. Yeah, it's the analog man. Oh yeah, no, you want you want the guitar going like straight into that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can put the buffer after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, it'll uh, work still, but it won't sound like it's supposed to. Yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, so uh, Citizen Kane, soldering is really easy. Don't be intimidated. I agree with that. Just give it a shot. It's soldering not that hard. Soldering can be easy if you know how to do it. I mean, it, 
if you know how to tin cables properly and you know how to strip the cables properly and mm -hmm. you 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 know how to tin the ends properly and then know how to put the two together well and the, the proper temperature for your iron is critical and there's a lot of yeah 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 i mean i can tell you just as a complete novice i'm sure i suck but i still get the job done mm -hmm. you know it still works <laughs> yeah, yeah. It may take me to what two two or three times, but um, let's see. Uh, has anyone ever seen or heard talk of viable alter alternative speaker design that gives the sound of a twelve-inch speaker in a so smaller package? Hogwash. Mm. Phys <laughs> physics. Hogwash. Yeah. Here's a good one that Marvel Harris brought up, and I think P. Thor sort of answered later on, but. Uh, what does Dave think about the guy from Carol Ann going on about the amp world's future and how Dave made it only because he had contacts in the in, in the industry? <laughs> well, well, did you hear that? No, I. Uh, so okay, so uh, uh, wait, where did it go again? Sorry. I avoid. I avoided Marvel that. Question. Harris, I'm glad you took it. So, I avoided that question. What does Dave think about the guy from Carol Ann Amps? going okay. on about the amp uh the amp world's future and how dave made it only because he uh had contacts in the industry um well i i have a, an opinion about that okay let's hear your opinion um i think you made it because you worked hard and you made great products right i mean you know I agree with well that here's way. the thing okay part of that is maybe true um I did have contacts in the industry because I had established them with my other business building rigs and things. But if I didn't make a good product to begin with or a product that people wanted, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, so what? It wouldn't work. Yeah. It wouldn't work. I mean, Steve Stevens doesn't play the amp because he's my buddy that I knew. He plays the amp because he loves it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same go with all our artists. I mean, you know, the, I mean, uh, we, we don't pay our endorsees to be there, you know. They, they're there because they want to be there, and most of them have paid for their amplifiers, all of them, actually. Um, well, and, and a lot of that, that a lot of that networking that you did, I mean, there were probably nights when you would have rather been home watching TV. Sure. I mean, there's networking. Yeah. I mean, networking, yeah, but it's it, you can network all you want because you don't have the product to back it up. It's useless. Right. It's never going to work. And, and I always say... When people ask about different amp companies and different things and 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 all that, I I'm like, you know, I can't force a person to buy my amp. Uh, they're gonna buy the amp regardless. A guitar player is gonna buy the amp that speaks to him the most. He's gonna buy the amp that he likes the best. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I hit on something that wasn't done and and was not in existence and it spoke to a lot of people so i you know again i can't i don't i can't force them to buy it i mean if they like the bogner better go buy the bogner if they like the soldano better go buy the soldano go buy all of them uh if you want the bad cat buy the bad cat if you want the matchless buy the matchless it just sounds um, like sounds like sour just, grapes to me listen to listen to them all and decide what you'd like to buy not forced, you know. There, there's a lot of good amps out there. I mean, all those people I mentioned are making great amps. Mm -hmm. They're just different flavors. It's like, you know, do you like the the tacos from the the taco truck down the street here, or do you like the other tacos at the place at Burbank? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, or or do you like the, you know, you know, what kind of chili are you going to make today? You know, there's a million recipes, and and they're all good. It just um, it's just the different kinds of players, you know. They're they're they're, you know. Dave's got his kind of guys, and you know, I'm sure Caroline has guys like his amps and guys like my amps. And I mean, I I, I think it's just so distasteful to 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 bring up somebody in that context. That's it's sort of offensive. Mm -hmm. It is offensive. I think it's offensive too. I mean, I'm not sitting there talking about his amps or anything like that. Nor would I, because I, I mean, I think. I, I, I know his amps and he's made some really great amps. So I, I don't, you know, it's, 
Be nice. It's just, it's just jealousy. Nice. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's just don't freaking be, jealousy. Be don't nice. Be, again, that's the thing. I'm not jealous about any amp company because it's it's like, again, the player is going to choose which amp he likes the best. Mm. They're all good. What amp speaks to you the most? What amps do you like the best for the kind of tone you're going for? You know, I mean, my amp's not right for a jazz guy or something, you know? A jazz but, box guy, you know, that wants a clean little amp, you know, that, that with a big body, hollow body guitar. That's probably not, you know, my clientele. Unless he's a badass jazz player. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Pete. I, I Pete answered it pretty well uh, here. Um, I just had it. Dave made it. Here's Pete's quote: Dave made it because he made great sounding amps that did what people wanted, and then he made some good business moves. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I I I sort of took that that tack. I was I was planning on not going to Nam this year, mm -hmm. and. Um, Ultimately, I, I did a lot of soul searching, and I thought, you know, if Nam wasn't working for me, that was really more my fault, right? Right. I mean, because I really did. I, I took the old, you know, nineteen nineties approach of get the booth, bring all the amps, stand in the middle of the booth, and wait for something to happen. And that you can't do that now. Yeah. You know, there's a whole lot of work to be done. Well, you know, the funny thing about Nam is I, I often think it's uh, – I, I would agree. We don't necessarily have to go either. Um, but it's an when, – when you're missing from Nam, Right. Everybody, everybody asks. Why are like, where, where are they? Why aren't they here? Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't seem – I mean, that's happened with a lot of companies. When they weren't missing at Nam. it's like, oh, my God, are they going out of business? Mesa, they doing poorly? Yeah. Are, are they doing poorly, yeah. or you know, or, or this and that? Mesa hasn't done it for a million years, you know. Doctor Z, yeah. did Doctor Z ever do it? No. Well, I mean, if you're a really small company and, and like you've never done it, uh, I, I, no one's missing you then because you're, they're not used to seeing you there. Yeah. But when you're a, a larger company and you disappear, well, like Gibson last year, uh, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, like you disappear completely, and it, it's kind of odd. I, I mean, maybe maybe you could do a smaller booth, you know, if you're if you're not comfortable with spending the amount of money. I mean, I know how much money goes out for our booth, and it's insane. Um, you know, could you do it with a smaller one? Yes, you could. Yeah. Do you bring a bunch of amps, John? Is that what you? I'm I'm going this year. I'm going to do a smaller booth in a better location. The, my old place, you know, I got stuck back in the corner with that that kind of strange shaped wall back in Hall D. And uh, man, you, you you stood over in that corner and just there was this massive coagulation of low frequency, and you took forty steps in the opposite direction and the volume dropped thirty percent. Were you and there I, last year? Yeah, yeah, I've been there for five so years. So that's now. that's where so, we they put all the guitar guys in the one hall. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You were you were you were further. You were on the other end of the of the building, though, kind of down. Yeah. That was so I. I'm, I found it kind of weird. Um, with all the guitar guys being in the one hall, uh, although it was great for the fact that everything was in the hall. It almost seemed smaller because of it. It, it seemed. Uh, mm -hmm. It seemed like. Where well, where are the where's all this stuff and where you know like mm -hmm. it seems like when it was spread out before it seemed like there was more of it and I don't know it's uh, yeah, yeah I think it's because they you know they kind of intersperse people with different things so you got a chance to see more things yeah right yeah yeah well yeah I, I don't know if it was such a good idea putting it all in one spot um, I understand the logic behind it but. Uh, I kind of liked it when it was spread out a little bit more and you, you'd have to see other things and other companies and things. Mm -hmm. And I, I found myself not seeing any of the rest of the show because of it. Right. Yeah. Cause everybody's right there. Yeah. 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 I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I took a, I took a, a smaller booth this year um, in a better location. Um, you know, I've only got, you know, seven models I'm bringing, you know, it's all, yeah. I, that's all, I, you know, so I, how much space do I need to show that? Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. What and, did you get uh, 10 by 20 or something or 10 by 10? Right. Or? Yeah, exactly. 10 by 20. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's all I need. Yeah. You may want to consider, I know, for uh, since you don't have like a sound booth or anything like that, like the aux, so people can plug in and put headphones on and listen. Oh, no, no. I, I, I take pride in those tickets. <laughs> yeah. I get, like I get in the more. Warnings. I get more uh, social media mileage from posing with those. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. As long as they so don't gonna, shut the electricity. Well, if you're if if you keep this up, we're gonna send you home. I go, please, God, send me home. I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I I freaking beg you, send me home. Yeah, that's funny. Um, Stephen Flynn, I saw the old Marshers on stage once years ago and loved the loved ev uh, every edition of the BE. It's all different flavors of good soup. Great. Yeah. Um, and there was another comment. I honestly think Dave made made it because he has a good ear and is really good at listening to his customers. There you go. Thank you. I would agree with that. Uh, you can never fault anyone from making it that's the goal that is true um, well, any, any, anybody who wouldn't be happy for somebody else making it i have to question you know i agree i'm always happy when some you know successful yeah maybe uh, it's just a little bit better yeah it just sounds it just sounds better exactly yeah. um how was the la amp show um it uh it was it was okay it was fun did you go or i know you i know the company went but did you go oh yeah i was there i was there yeah. both days it 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 wasn't what it once was uh it, it, a long time ago it used to have a lot of traffic and there was less traffic so i i used to go i i just you know it just looks like an aarp convention to me yeah it it yeah, yeah. Well, we can talk about that at a different time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, all right. Let's, John, Dave. Any chance you will do other topologies, non-Vox, non-Marshall? So for me, yeah. For, for you, non-Vox um, non topologies. Yeah. There's there's a um, there's a. Um, there's a couple little things I'm working on. One of them is I, I've always been a big fan of a. Um, I've got this, like I said, I got this 81 JMP. I, I just love, you know. But it's got its flaws. It's got some things about it I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, to be fair, I could probably go through Dave's line and find exactly what I want, you know, and be done with it. Right. But um, yeah, I, I might play around with the, that that JMP circuit a bit. Um, and there was a, a six SL seven preamp that I kind of like. There's some things you can do with that that are kind of interesting um, that I might get to one of these days. Cool. And Dave, what about you? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do something with the Vox category. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still, I still want to do some um, more. Vintagey sort of amps because uh, I love that, and uh, I would like to do almost like a separate offshoot of a line that is uh, more vintage-like amps. So in a variety of styles, like non-master volume type thing, like non-master volume type things. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just uh, uh, you know. The, I love I love amps like that. So, mm -hmm. so it's like you know, part of me just wants to do it for fun. Gotcha. You know? well, that's and cool. We'll we'll see if that actually happens. Though. Gotcha. Hey, it's getting late. Um, I think I'm going to try to wrap this up. If that works for you guys, sure. Uh, um, I wanted to address a couple of things though. One is last show we had with uh, Tom Abraham. Um, it took a while for that video to render and upload onto YouTube, guys. So for whatever reason, if that happens again, 
I've been in contact with a guy at U at YouTube who will help get it done faster. But just just in case you guys know, um, after this show ends, it may take a little time for this to uh, load up. It may have like the first hour missing or something like that for a day. Hopefully that won't happen. That's only happened once before, but I just wanted to let you know because I had to get that fixed with Tom's show, our last episode. Um, the next episode, I believe, will be, Dave, when you get back, um, and we'll do it on October 29th with uh, Greg Koch. Mm -hmm. Is that who I'm is, Am I saying his last name right? Is it Koch or Koch? Let's just go with Koch. All right. <laughs> I think it's Coke. Greg Coke. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Greg, Greg but Cock. We, but Cock is good. Yeah. Let's yeah. go with that. I think Greg, it's Cock, actually. Greg's an awesome player, and uh, I think he's gonna. He's pretty much confirmed. I heard from him today. So October 29th, uh, that is a Monday. Um, so that'll be our next show because Dave, you're going to be traveling around. Yeah. Um, God knows what kind of internet I have at different spots. So, yeah. So we'll just we'll take a few weeks break. We'll come back on the 29th, um, and then following from there, we also have uh, Roger Mayer. Oh, great! Yeah, the f famed uh, pedal maker. Um, so Roger is going to be coming on the show at some point. Just got to wait for uh, Dave. Will confirm when when you get back from Europe and everything like that. Yeah. We'll work on that and um and that's it so uh john thank you so much for, yeah, thank uh, you john yeah uh, dave mark thank you very much for having me on i really appreciate that i enjoyed it very much yeah we'll yeah. see you at nam come by see, and check the guitars out i'm gonna come by and buy a guitar from you all, all right. right awesome well okay. we'll definitely stop by the booth too see you um look forward to meeting you in person yeah absolutely and if people want to reach you or uh, check out Bad Cat Amps, how do they do that? Uh, BadCatAmps.com and uh, John at BadCatAmps.com is my web uh, my uh, email address. And I made the mistake of putting my personal cell phone on the gear pages one time, and that was probably ill-advised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially the gear page. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right oh that's funny yeah all right well guys check out bad cat amps great stuff and uh john a pleasure it's great to meet you and thanks again and dave we'll we'll catch up you guys hang yeah. on just for a second while i hang up everybody have a great night it's been a great thanks bunch everyone of viewers thanks Thank you. again and uh we'll talk soon take care awesome <laughs>